It's clobberin' time! Atomic batteries to power. Turbines to speed. Roger. Ready to move out. Come get some. It's clobber time! Clobberonimo! Oh, Clobberonimo! Greetings. Clobberers, Clobberonimos, Clobberuskis, Clobberoids, Clobarians, Clobologists, and every other kind of clob out there. For those who have not yet clobbed, in Twitter, you can learn too. Just the secret is to. Clobberonimo! Love it, love it, love it. Hi, my dear friends. Welcome, of course, to uh, Clobber Times ICU number 440 on YouTube, number 1,440 overall. And, of course, it is Clobby's Clubhouse, number 120, with the most wonderful first officer in the fleet, the, the grazing commander, R.M. Briggs, and, of course, the greatest chief engineer in the fleet, Mark D with A C E E E E E E E E E C C. What she said. So good to see you all here tonight, my friends. And it'll be a a standard clubhouse edition. Those you never know. There could be a little couple, a few surprises as well. A Blake Seven episode review, a Star Trek comic review, and much, much more geekiness, foolishness, nerdiness, and and stuffiness like that he does. So um <laughs> all that jazz. Oh, <laughs> well and uh so um while we, we're ready to get started we'll, I will as always turn the floor over to my amazing first officer the extraordinary Almost. Commander Briggs in any opening words you may have please go for well, it. Thank you so much Captain it's good to be here it's always an honor and, pl and a pleasure thank you for inviting me and allowing me to be a part of your virtual comic book shop you know that I adore you hail to the chat good evening everyone it is so good to see you I am so looking forward to discussing Blake 7 uh, season 2 episode 1 redemption with you all tonight it's going to be uh, oodles and poodles of fun I am also also super excited um, to bring to a close Clobby's instruction, his seminar on Star Trek Untold Voyages. Boy, what a great ride this has been as uh, Clobby takes us through all of these magnificent um, Star Trek comics. They're not all winners, but they're definitely not all losers. And uh, it's just so much fun to talk about them. So, um, and I'm sure Mark, who owns his own personal museum, will have something on offer a bit later uh, after that. So it's always interesting. He's always got a surprise he can take down from the attic or bring up from the base. Basement. Like I said, the guy lives in a in a geek museum. Um, so with the hellos to the chat out of the way, I just want to say hello to the wrenches. I just want to say how much uh, I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for being here and helping us to produce this show. We're nothing without the chat and without the wrenches. I mean, you guys are the reason why we're here. Without you, we are... <laughs> 
Um, I have some <laughs> special words, a special shout out for some really special people um, who are just loving, kind, loyal, talented. They're always out there promoting um, creators and they're always promoting Clobby's channel and they're always promoting my books and so uh, and my stories. So I just want to say how much I appreciate Lord Thoth, um, my good friend, Larry Larry. Uh, Larry Larry, I love you so much. Chris Persia, who makes the most beautiful show posters as if we're creating a new Hollywood film every week, twice a week. He is making these beautiful posters and spreading them all over social media and telling people to stop on by here, welcoming them, um, always trying to build up this community. I also want to thank my buddy, Gwagnar. Gwagnar, I just love you. Thank you for always being out there for Clavi and for me. I also want to thank Bubba Doom. Uh, Bubba Doom was out there uh, talking about Clobby and, and getting people to um, to come here, to come to the show and check out Clobber and Times. And I also want to thank Fee. Uh, you know her as Princess Fiona. You know I call her Fee, uh, Fiona. And when she's on a tear, I call her Fee Fifo Fum. Um, thank you so much, Fee, for being out there um, raising uh, the profile of this channel and for all of your support. I also want to wave hello to all of the folks on X. Holy cow, was Saki's Batman. Um, there are between 50 and 150 of you who are tuning in now uh, via X, which is formerly known as Twitter. Thank you for that. It's so good to have you. Welcome aboard. Um, I also want to say thank you to all of the lurkers. At the end of the week, these shows get two 300, sometimes more people um, downloading them, re-watching them. We have an international crowd here. And that's due to people like Retro Dickie. You know him as Dr. Mew. Uh, folks like mm -hmm. and certainly uh, West Kegel, who isn't always in the chat. But these are just a few names in example of the hundreds of people who watch this show. We all, you know, we appreciate you so much. And um, and thank you so much for, for being a part of Clobbering Times. Are you a member yet? You should be. Uh, membership has its privileges. You get to hang out around with Clobby, who is a bona fide subject matter expert um, in comic book publishing and production. Uh, he knows everything about the artists, everything about the artwork, everything about the creation of comics. And he also has some pretty excellent opinions on a geek stuff too. Um, certainly a film aficionado uh, with some wonderful opinions there. So you can hang out with him uh, at, with his member chats. And you can also use some ridiculous emojis that Mark and I make together, um, and they're always great fun. If you are not uh, uh, ready for a membership yet, but you have a great time tonight, please don't forget to share this stream. Please don't forget to clobber the uh, like button, and uh, don't forget to hit the subscription button as well as that notification bell so you know when Clobby is online and creating wonderful memories for us at his virtual comic book shop. Um, I'm an author. Um, uh, I write uh, science fiction. Um, it is episodic classic science fiction. I'm not an activist. There is no activism. It's just shooting straight from the hip like Captain Kirk. Um, just regular sci-fi. And I hope you will support me. You can buy my science fiction at Barnes & Noble. You can also get it at Amazon. And you don't even have to hold, buy the whole book. You can figure out whether or not you like me because I sell all of my stories a la carte. That is correct. For 99 cents, you can get all of my short stories um, and uh, figure out if they are um, up to snuff for you. I have a new book coming out. And I want to thank the people who back that book because these people don't just support me. They're the backbone of this community. Every single name that is on this list is a person who is supporting Clobby. They're supporting Mark. They're supporting the big channels, the little channels, the big creators, the little creators. These are important people who need to be thanked and recognized in our community. So here we go. Um, I love you, Larry, Larry. Thank you for everything. My, You're such a wonderful gentleman. Thank you. I want to thank Tony Stark, Sean Carter, Penny Lane, Shuta, Wagner, Dave, Chris Persia, Scuba and Leslie Pete, Eric Kay and his trusty dusty dog, Kirby. I love that guy. Enigmatic Dropper, Michael and Cassandra Beacom, Mark D with a C, Anti-Derivative Jill, Maximum Redstone, JT Cook, Dabman and the Dabman Clan, Lord and Lady Thoth, and of course Lance. Don't forget to chuck some cheese in the chat for all of our pepperonis. Rob Altus, Tyler, Jeff Wyatt. Thank you so much, Jeff. Rod Thunderheart, and of course, 
Nazareth. Thank you one and all for supporting um, my stories, for keeping science fiction alive, and certainly science fiction that we all want to read, because nobody wants to read this corporate dribble that does nothing but just admonish us and um, it's just ridiculous and very poorly written. So um, now I'm going to shut my face because we're going to have so much fun tonight um, talking about Blake 7, Star Trek The Untold Voyages, and whatever mysteries uh, Mark will produce uh, through his museum. So let's do it! Yeah, are you in a mysterious mood, Marky? Is I think you went here? to go get a coffee, boss. Oh, okay. Start here? Where is he? Oh, well, he'll be here. He was here. No, he's not. Oh, well. All right, my dear friends. What's up with your bad selves? Hope you're all doing well tonight. Good to see you all. Um, We're just getting stuff ready for the show. And uh, let's see here. I got that. I was, uh, sorry, I was fixing uh, doing some last-minute show stuff there that I freaking forgot to do. Dang it. Um, so shout outs and show notes or no show notes and shout outs, right? That's the way it goes. Mm -hmm. I had it backwards for a minute. Some show notes and some shout outs. Shall we, my dear friends? Uh, we let's see. Indeed. -ishness. So, um, I had a great time tonight on the amazing, uh, Mark, excuse me, Tom uh, Connors channel, Midnight's Edge After Dark. I want to thank Tom mm -hmm. and that great group for that. Um, I want to thank the great Max Redstone for hanging out with me last night, talking some Superman too. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you. Was it a throwdown? Did you guys go blow nah. for blow? No, nah, it was a lot of fun. We just hung out and had a, a cool conversation, like a couple of oh, good, good old good old buddies. Oh, it good, was a lot good, of fun. good. And one I, was in favor of Superman too, right? And then the other one I, was we, against. We were just Superman a conversation too. about it, but I had a lot of problems with it. Let's put it like oh, that. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Nice. I nice. do have a lot of serious problems with it where most of the entire rest of the universe loves it. Okay. Um, okay. I gotcha, I gotcha. Yes, indeed, but it was fun. He's always wanted to He's always wanted to set me straight on that. And uh, the fact that he fails is not something I feel. He failed is not something I hold against him. You did your best, Max. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing. I mean, we wouldn't really argue that much. We just talked about our That's things good. we liked and all that kind of good stuff. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, have um, to be careful you don't tease him too much, though, because he is uh, the music meister. He is our our resident limerick. Clementine's claim to be the son, son of Jarrell. <laughs> Kneel before Zod. <laughs> oh, <sighs> yeah, and um, oh yeah, but. Max, uh, I just have one thing to say to you, pal. Superman. 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 Uh, I thought he would enjoy that. We should have had those last night, but uh, the great Mark D. Came through later, and we had that. I thought you would enjoy that, Max. <laughs> we were talking about the wonderful Sarah Douglas, who's in that role, and um, how we met her one time. Mm -hmm. We had her, we had her say it. We had her say that. A buddy of mine walked up to her at a con, and we asked her to say it like that, and she said it just <gasps> like this. No Superman. way. Superman. <laughs> she was so sweet. It was a lot of fun. I'm, I'm so happy you had a good experience. Oh, my God. Texas here. Yeah, well, I'm going to shout him out. I'm going to do the shout outs after I do the show notes. But Sarah it's good to see you, buddy. sweetheart, Larry says. Let's see. She is. So um, good to see you there, brother. But I'm, I'm going to do the, I do the show now. I should have just gotten back to my shout outs. I'm sorry. Anyway, tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, 7 Eastern. I'll be on my great buddy J-Man's channel. And we've been having a great fun J-Man and Sean and myself. On uh, Fearless Fridays, reviewing the great uh, Frank Miller's Daredevil run from the early 1980s. It changed comics. It is a mat on one of his masterpieces. And uh, we're just having a blast doing that. Three more issues tomorrow night on J-Man's channel. And then later, um, I don't think Nick's going to have the comic shop talk tomorrow. I think he's not going to be able to do it. I'm usually on there Friday nights with him in the, in the Friday Night Comic Shop Boys. But it looks like we may not have one tomorrow night, but he'll may have to do an impromptu on Saturday or be back the following Friday. But then the Saturday night Star Trek, oddly enough, on Saturday night. 
Same Trek time, same clubby channel, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're just getting started on Star Trek Voyage um, Season 5 with four scintillating episodes. And, uh, well, we have a lot of fun in the chat anyway. Again, we just uh, having a blast. We thank you all for hanging out with us on Saturday nights. It is just so much fun. And if you have not been there, you should come hang with us sometimes. It's great, great stuff. Great fun. And um, let's see here. Then on the Mark, the, the great chief of engineers channel, the Sunday night geekery will return. Yeah, we'll be back. At the standard. Yeah, we're back at the regular time, 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, no stuff ball to contend with. Nothing, none of that stuff. And I don't even say that. Did you, man, I'm going to say that words, those words on this channel. <laughs> even though I'm about to have to because someone's got that name of the chat. I'm going to get on them about too. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, we'll have the Sunday Night Geekery as usual. You know, if you want to end your week winding down with some fun geeks, please stop by. And if you have not, put, put your link in the chat, by the way. If, we'll uh, yep. by chance, any of you have not subscribed to my our Chief Engineer's great channel, Mark D. with a C's channel, please uh, follow his link and go do so. And we'd appreciate that. And then come hang out with us on Sunday nights. For the, e the Geekery, which sometimes becomes even eatery. But uh, yeah. anyway. No diets on my channel. And then back on J-Man's channel, 6 p.m. Central, 7 Eastern on Monday night. As always, three times a month anyway, uh, um, Sean and J-Man and I continuing our ongoing mission of reviewing all of the every uh, uh, silver and bronze age appearance of the Legion of Superheroes in chronological order. And uh, having a wonderful time doing that. It's going to take us some time, but we're going to get it all done. And then after that, I'll be, be I'll be here at the same clobby time, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, for Monday Night Mark C Comics Talk. It is Superman Month. I will have a Superman topic. I'm not exactly sure what yet, but I'll have it Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm always at six. I'm always at Tom Connor's Great Midnight's After Dark Channel, and then on Wednesday nights, no Roundtable on Loki's channel this week. But I will be here for a Wild Card Wednesday Night Superman topic. Again, not sure what. But the following a week from the next Wednesday night, I'm going to have Michael with Retro Blasting join me for a Superman topic for that. And then um, we're going to have one night next week, we're going to have the Superman birthday party. Superman's birthday actually falls on the clubhouse on the, on the 29th. I may have to do a special show before that. We will see. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. That's the show notes. Now some shout-outs. So shout-out our wrenches, and then I'll get you all shout-out in the chat. Because it's the clubhouse, and that's how we roll up in here. We like to shout out all of our good friends, the, including, whether they're here or not, the wrenches get the shouts. The great Eric K., the bronze wrencher. Vindicated wrencher, that great white north, the extraordinarily great Chris Persia. Thanks for all you do, buddy. D. Bud Martin, the wrench of iron. Lord Thoth, god of the wrenches. Avon lives and long live the legion, my friend. The Wrench Without Fear, the great J-Man. And partner in crime on Earth, B, Legionnaire Extraordinaire, Frank Miller, we were extraordinaire. Maddie's Daddy, we were the Wrench Beyond, yeah. Stephen Cowell, the Super Wrench. The Rascally Wrench himself, Phantom Outsidery, Hungry Boy, Master of the Claboni. The Master of the Limerick, our own music master, Maximum Redstone, and Triple Bullwinkle, Larry, Larry, Larry. And now, let's see. Oops, who is with us in the chat? I'm going to back the chat up, and we're going to yell you all out, because that's what we do up in here. That's well, how we roll on clobbering times, especially on the clubhouse. All the time, really, but, you know, because you're important to us. We appreciate you being here. You're our friends. Uh, Captain Infinity, Section 31. Uh-oh. That's scary. <laughs> FKHC 2005. Hi. What's up, Tim? Putin's dog. Oh, cat. Sorry. Sorry. Putin's cat. <laughs> oh, the lovely Ginger Menace. Hello there, my dear. So lovely to see you. Pretty Hi, face. Mary. I love you. Thank you for being here. Yes, indeed. Love you, Mary. Greg. <laughs> no, you didn't do it all. No, I did it. Well, I did it at the top of the show, the whole thing, but I could do it. Oh. Greg. Yeah. Yeah, he never gets it. That never gets old. No. I love him. That helps with the ratings too. You can see that yeah. that is actually where my <laughs> avatar comes from. That's right. That that's right. Yeah. Gwag Look at that. Reading my book. Hey. <laughs> Gwag love it. Did that. Love it. Yeah, I love Gwag. 
Uh, 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 Stuart Mitchell. Dolly had braces. All right. Dolly had braces. Hello, my buddy. Yes, she um, did. Mr. Angel, what's up, chef? Chef, 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 chef. Good to see you, buddy. Ravenscroft. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, oh, hello, hello. I stored something that Ravenscroft um, asked you. Um, okay. It's in your folder. Clobby, have you addressed the FF casting anywhere? I know tonight might not be the night. I was just curious. I have on a couple of places. A couple of places. I was a guest on the show last night and a guest tonight on Tom's. But I tell you what, in between our reviews and stuff, I'll be I'll be glad to touch on it for you if you remind me. We'll talk about it later when we get something done from our reviews, Ravenscroft. Um, and I'll do that for you if you remind me. Though you know my you know my memory. Uh, also, the great Max Redstone made a member chat. Eighteen months. Thank you, Max. He says, uh, "Non kills kids." Remember Superman two, yeah. Superman two forever. It's true. Non kills kids in the in the in the uh, TV cut. Um, Dave C. Dave. Hey hey hey! Our lovely friend Penny. Hello Penny. Good evening Penny. Good to see you Penny. Kili Chow. Roll that tide. Roll tide. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Ba, ba, ba. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, 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 um, no more. I've shouted most of these out already, but I'll get to I'm sure there are plenty that haven't yet. Hang on. Claude Salang. Hello there, my friend. Welcome. Evening, Claude. Um, Adrian James. Hello there, my friend. Good evening, Adrian. Welcome, Thank welcome. you for joining us. Blunt plump reviews, my friend. All right. Blunt reviews. 1701, the great Tex. Yo, brother. Hey, Tex. He said I missed a Larry. I'm I'll try <laughs> to find him. You uh, mean the man who's so nice you should say his name twice, perhaps thrice? You I mean Larry, Larry, Larry? I said it three times. Um <laughs> um but, but, I hate even saying your title. I don't know who you are. By the way, I know you're not fool. You're not fool anyway. You know you, Matt G. U. Taylor Swift, greater than Disney, Star Wars, and MCU. <laughs> you know, I have. Even though I agree with that, I'm tired of Taylor Swift's ruining, getting involved in everything. Okay, Overexposure. Your parents were also tired of the Beatles. Uh, as a Canadian, well, I mine like weren't. Say, mine weren't. I, as a Canadian, I would just like to say that people need to lay off the TikTok that is trying to convince them that American culture is awful or bad in some way, and just embrace the fact that American culture is really cool, and it's really beautiful, and um, yeah, just get rid of TikTok. It's okay to celebrate Americans and American culture. So you tell the me- good, have, the bad, and the ugly of it. You tell me I have to stop looking at girls dancing on TikTok? Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Right. Is Pock Tick okay to use, though? Yeah, no. A, Pock Tick. All right, uh, Apollomy's Minion is here. And the pepperoni. Yeah. The pepperoni. Oh, come on. That was pathetic. Oh. <laughs> and I tried a new prop. It didn't work. Thanks a lot. Everybody's a critic. <laughs> I got to keep a drumstick. Um, bum, 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 bum. Yeah, I need one. Nah, I don't like dark meat. I like white meat. Um, what if I got you a gavel? I don't know. I just, just a drum will do, or maybe a maybe a tambourine. Um, mm, tambourine. My green tambourine. Let's see. So we got anybody else to shout out? The scintillating shout outs. Don Don Ranger Power. Don Don Power Ranger. Oh, he's Ranger Power. I know. <laughs> the Tetrarch of Apathy. So apathetic. Joe Dog Buddy. Hey, hey, hey. What's oh, up? He said, I oh, went to oh. I went to Texas Roadhouse for my 23rd birthday. Excellent. Oh, nice. I, I like me some Texas Roadhouse. Did you get Roadkill, as they call it? No, that's a dis that's a dis they call Roadkill. Very cool. There you go. Um, DJ play nice. Hey, 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 hey. Rock on. Uh Ba -ba. I had to run this thing way back. So, hey, be patient, for ladies and gentlemen. I like to get everybody to uh, stop myself from saying genitals, but I said it anyway. Um, I love it when you say ladies and gerbils. Ladies and gerbils. I like and ladies and germs. That's Maybe my favorite. Yeah. Anyway, ladies when and gerbils. When you say uh, gerbils, it's great. Hello, ladies and germs. 
And that reminds me of a, so, a story so dirty, I'm ashamed to think of it myself. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Uh, and that is uh, every we've shouted them all out, I suppose. So, 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 so. Yeah, Max, a squeaky gavel. I need to get him a squeaky gavel. Squeaky wheel. All right. Okay. So well, there we go. We're we're now officially. We've now officially started. Twenty five minutes in. <laughs> okay. Oh, he Chris, knows. I'll think about it. He knows my growl show, of course, sir. I don't. Don't know what they have to say. I make no difference anyway. Whatever it is, I'm against it. But even when you've changed it or condensed it, I'm against it. Yeah. Honk, honk. Honk, honk. <laughs> bonk, bonk, bad kid. Bonk on your head. Yes, bonk, Ravenscroft. Bonk on the head. It's exactly like Menudo. I never understood the whole Menudo thing either. I also <laughs> never understood Madonna. And I also never understood, um, what's it? Not the Backstreet Boys, the other guy. The new kids on the block. Never the understood it. Never understood <laughs> it. Me either. So, uh, uh, Paul, let me would like to know how you would like your picture sent. Uh, however you can send it uh, and just as cheap as possible. I will warn everyone now, sometimes things don't get here. Like, okay, you're all going to be freaked out when I say this, but I mailed Scuba and Leslie Pete's Christmas card on December 14th, it might have been 13th. It was either the 13th or the 14th that I mailed it uh, out. They just got their Christmas card today. So it's like I live on Mars. I don't know why it costs $1 trillion to send everything here and why it takes an eon. And yet here I am in Canada land, as mm. um, Mark likes to call it. Yeah. The Mutari wow. Nebula. Well. Yes. <laughs> No. So, but, however uh, you well, can get it here, you, and I'm your good. address for Cal, I think she's looking for an address too. So you can, uh, the one I have that goes to a post office box, or what's the yes, uh, the post office box the one, please. Yeah, I'll confirm Fiona. that with you after the show and get that. Uh, AM. Thank you, Mark. Fiona, Princess Fiona. Hey, 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 hey. There you go. Well, good to see you, Fiona. Um, 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 what am I doing? Okay, well, um, so uh, I guess we should probably go ahead and get started. Yeah. On our review, you want to do our first review or what? You can start setting it up. Yeah, yeah let me start setting it up. And, okay. Uh, and I do agree with uh, Captain Finney. I do like Villa a lot. But uh, <laughs> oh, and the one thing I wanted to mention last night, you, got, you guys were doing Superman, Superman 2. Serverland was awesome in Superman, Superman 2 last night. Serverland. All right. There we go. Well, she, I will tell you. Tell me she's not channeling Serverland well, in that movie. Now she that I've sort watched of like her, yeah. Right? Now, well, if one of you could uh, take the con, i got to get some water. I've got to get my water. Okay. You go ahead, boss. Well, take, take it out. Well, we'll get ready. We'll get set up. So. Okay. I'll right set back. you up. Let okay, everyone. The, uh, um, we're gonna, uh, going to. Now is the Blake 7 segment. Uh, we're going to be covering Redemption tonight. This is season two, episode one. Uh, and this first aired on January 9th, 1979. Now, it's very important that everyone here realize that Clobby is the biggest Blake 7 fan in the history of all of fandom, no matter what you like or dislike. Um, the man can quote the show. So um, he gives us a summary off the top of his head. And uh, it's really cool because it's an entirely organic summary. Um, that he doesn't practice or even think about. And, and it just shows his passion for the show. Um, but it also gives us a chance to, you know, it, it gives him a chance to illuminate some of the things that are most important to him. And then we riff off of that and we talk about it for a little bit. And, and Mark interjects and I interject. And then, you know, we, we can uh, uncover uh, what we all think about um, this episode um, and all of the episodes. So that's the format. And we are just waiting for the boss uh, to take a little bit of medication. And then he will be right back to get that summary started. I would also like to thank Mark, who is our very own Scotty, uh, for making this wonderful presentation um, that is a terrific visual for the show and can also jog your memory 
um, if it's been a while since you watched the episode and offer some, some wonderful um, talking points to folks in the chat. When we're done evaluating it, we ask the chat what they thought of the episode, and then um, I will star uh, those comments, and then Clavi will read them, and we'll talk about how, how what you think what you thought of the episode, um, uh, because that's super important to us here. That's just how we roll. And with that, I think Clobby should be back now. Boss man? Uh, oh, no, yeah. not yet. <laughs> yeah, he's back. Yeah. Oh, he was hey, Clobby! Uh, uh, kept forgetting to do some stuff. Okie dokily. All right. So where were I? Where's he? Where's the eye? Okay. What are we? Uh, um, there were a couple of things, Mark, that we talked about last night I, that I wanted to clip that I was going to tell you about and I totally forgot about it. That's all right. I'll try to do some during the show if I have time. Yep. I have like three specific great bits that I would love to have clipped, but I didn't get a chance to, to tell That's you right. about I can, them. I can do it during the show. Yeah, I'm, I'm so big. I can do some engineering in the background. Well, yeah. we'll, 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 hey, where's my. Uh, Oh, there it is. I had a Blake 7 background thingy. Yeah, there we go. Well, bop, 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 bop. Okay. Really, Chris Persia, November 20th? I sent a whole bunch out, out at the end of November, but I just didn't want to send them out too early. Um, I mean, Clavi got his on time, and I think Mark got his. I got at, mine on uh, time, yeah. You got what? yours on time as well. So it's just so weird that, I mean, come on. It's like the middle of February. Like, wow, Chris, why do we live in this country, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Because of the great weather, the, the, the warmth. Yeah, yeah the right. Warmth the yeah. Okay. All right. So let's see. What's up? There we go. Uh, are we ready? Are we ready? Yeah. Red me. Okay, folks. We're beginning season two tonight. Season two, episode one. But overall, it's episode 14, of course. It is redemption. Um, for those who were following along previously, uh, in the previous episodes, uh, Deliverance and Orac, Deliverance fled into Orac, uh, so to speak. Deliverance had a, a, a gentleman by the name of Insor, turns out he was Insor Jr., um, trying to make his way back to a planet called Aristo to save his, well, actually legendary father. His father was the uh, who created the like the cornerstone for all com computers used in the galaxy, based upon the principle of his technology, that all use the same principle um, used to, in a, a bit called the Terial Cell. It turns out his father was the inventor of that. Um, he was dying. Uh, he had a, a a bad heart many years previously when he lived on a he visited a a, a vacation on a primitive more primitive planet that he ended up with an inferior heart. Uh, implant thingy, but anyway, uh, this he was trying to sell the Federation a device called ORAC and made negotiations for same for you know, in exchange for these power cells and, and the use of uh, a surgeon to perform the surgery to save his father's life, his insor's life, it's sort of senior. And on the way, well, Federation, uh, well, they, they attacked, uh, they uh, basically they they. They sabotaged the ship. It blew up. Insor and his and his and his uh his surgeon, the insor the surgeon died. Insor was badly injured. The liberator picked him up, and the liberator eventually, uh, by the end of the uh, uh, after deliverance, they go to the planet Aristo. Uh, they're in need of drugs for the rest of the crew, led by Avon. It's also Villa Gan and Jenna need uh, radioactive decontaminants, which for some reason the liberator does not have. Ezra Goldstein, welcome. Shalom, my friend. Um, Shalom. They figure we can hopefully get some from Insor. He will have some. They at least what they're banking on. So they go to uh, deliver the power cells. They know not what ORAC is at this point. At the same time, Serverland and, and uh, Travis were there, also going to take Serverland for them. No, excuse me, take ORAC for themselves because they'd off, they'd uh, offered money they never intended to pay for it. But a uh, hundred million credits. So eventually, we find out that Orac is an extraordinarily powerful supercomputer. Again, that has the ability to read 
any computer extract knowledge, extract information from any computer in the known galaxy, because it's based on the print. They're all based upon the same principle, uh, the Tariel cell created by Inswar. So that's your basic setup for what ORAC is. They ended up taking ORAC. Inswar passed away, unfortunately. Avon shoots Travis's hand off. And there you have the end at the very end of the episode of ORAC. Uh, ORAC, meaning an oracle, basically they were they were made a prediction and broadcast on the screen an image of the Liberator exploding. Spacecraft will be destroyed, and um, that was your cliffhanger for season one. It was a great season, cliffhanger. Yes, great cliffhanger. By the way, I guess we should say spoilers, even though everyone knows we're reviewing. So we're spoilering the hell out of these episodes, folks. Just so you'll know. And I forget to say that sometimes, but hey, here we go. Um, so <clears throat> on to season two, episode one. Uh, overall, though, episode 14, because there's 13 episodes per season. Um, it's called Redemption. It is written by Terry Nation. And um, it is... Oh, where's my term info? I'm oh, sorry. All right, there we go. Um. It was directed by by Veer Lorimore, one of the premier directors, one of the top-notch directors of Blake Seven, by the way. And um, basically, the crew is pretty upset and worried, very tense, wondering, are we going to blow up? What's going to happen? There's a and this is part where uh, you know, I wish I'd have told you the clip. I forgot all about this. So you talk about me for remembering and being able to... Yes, let me know the line and I'll, I'll grab it, yep. Uh, well, there's an exchange between Avon and Blake at the beginning where Avon, and Blake's trying to figure out what's what's happening and Avon basically explains the nature of prediction to, uh, to Blake. And he opens up with the line, imagine that you are standing next to a cliff and you know what, Avon, what Blake said to him. As long as you're yep, not standing Avon's behind great. me. <laughs> so that's one. <laughs> there are others. Okay, I'll grab that one. So as long as you're not standing behind me, yeah. So what I do, yeah. I, I look it up in the, uh, I know that's three minutes and 59 seconds into the episode. By so the way, then there's the one about yeah, hey, uh, about Villa saying, if it, ever becomes, if it ever comes between a showdown between the two of them, my money's on Blake. Or at least yeah, half that's a good one. The other half on Avon. So. Anyway. <laughs> in general, so, absent, yeah. Avon explains to Blake that if you, know, if you look at the configuration of the stars where the explosion happened, You'll get a, you get an astro fix of where the ship was, and we just need to never go near that sector of space. The woke breaker, woke breaker. Let's know we'll yeah. never go near those stars. And even he says, "What?" He says, "Basically, that's a prediction. That's all it is." So you basically, you never went near the cliff in the first place. But it's all fine and good till not too not too long after this, the ship starts acting funny and starts. Uh, well, someone's caught up to the ship. Sh uh, very smaller versions of ships, obviously based upon the same technology and similar designs to the Federation, uh, excuse me, to the Liberator. And um, Zen is coming under their control. Orax busy, won't talk to them. He said, Yeah, yeah, getting, getting, what's Orax doing? doing? Sorry to interrupt, but what was Orax doing? He said he had three hours, he was doing something on his own accord, or? He said he's doing his own thing. Orak always has his own agenda. And basically, so he was just doing his own Orak, thing, right? Orak was doing is Orak realized that Avon was right about prediction, and Orak can't be wrong about anything. And so Orak was trying to fig figure out why, and when the system attacked, Orak knew it. And therefore, he knew that uh, he should work on a way to control the system. To, mm -hmm. to find a way to take over the crew, so he just didn't tell the crew. Okay, and he's yeah. done that before. He's just that. But it episode. wasn't like oh. Avon gave him a command to do something, and he was oh, working. Shit. He was just doing his own thing. Yep. Sorry, I have a mic mic problem. Sorry, I got, mic hang drop. For a second, I got to fix my microphone. I yeah. it fell off. I'm gonna. Yeah, mute. no. But my question was, yeah, just what? I'm uh, go ahead and mute real quick if you guys yeah. can take over a minute. Yeah, you. I'll I'll, I'll say a couple of things. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I was wondering what Orac was doing or, you know, and good writing too. You don't just have to explain everything too, but uh, I was just wondering that. And as someone was joking in our, in our watch party uh, that 
the the crew of uh, the Liberator should have gotten the extended warranty from uh, one of those car <laughs> companies. <laughs> extended warranties they didn't pay, but the, on the Liberator? was it Max Redstone? I can't. I'm not trying oh, to remember who it was. No, but yeah. Orax says that he is like running a diagnostic that will take three hours, right? Yeah, or he's doing his own. It's kind of his own, uh, his own his computations own and, and his yeah. own, he's doing his own thing. Like I'm looking he, for the quote now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was uh, busy doing, doing something when Avon is asking him to help, you know, basically yeah. uh, sa save us here. Yeah. So, uh, circuit clearance. Was it circuit clearance? Mm -hmm. I think that's, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see if, uh, I'm trying to see what, yeah, maybe he can analyze Zen's programming and, eradicate the override and bring Zen back under instruction, right? Clear this, the receptor circuits to receive an emergency program. Mm -hmm. Confirm when ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Confirm readiness. Come on. What's wrong? You tell me. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, uh, they're, they're going back and forth. Uh, back and forth. So State your programming needs. Yeah. <laughs> All the principal circuits are operating at full capacity and cannot receive new programs at this time. Yeah. <laughs> but so we're going like to die. Yeah. So something, you know, diagnostic or something was going on. So he needed to make space. Mars Monkey Max is here. Yes. Circuit clearance and reprogram will take one hour and 37.9 seconds. Oh. Yep. That could just be a little late. <laughs> I think that was <laughs> yeah, that, Blake says that. It would all yeah. be dead by then. But yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. But good, uh, you know, great interaction there with uh, Orac and uh, I mean, it's just one little boxer, but you can imagine how advanced computers are. You know, back uh, when I started computing, you know, you had a 4K computer and, uh, it, you know, it was a big, huge box. So, you know, if you told me I'd have a little, you know, thumb disk that someday could have, you know, uh, you know, 64 gigabytes on it or terabytes of information. Uh, what are you, crazy? Uh, or maybe I wouldn't have said that, you know, knowing computers but uh well i grew up really poor so um we didn't have a computer uh that would have been hysterical um it would be hysterical to even suggest that we would have a computer however i was in um a program in my, at my school that i was invited to and uh we had i think we had a lisa and we had an well, apple to e so uh well, we had worth a lot of money these days yeah <laughs> yeah so uh we and i don't think anyone used the lisa and we actually used it in a broom closet they cleared out a broom closet at the end of the portables <laughs> and so the lisa was there but it was shut off and we did uh we were learning dos on on the apple yep. ii and that was that was fun um, but, um, that, that was my first, that was my first, uh, computer experience. It, I think that was 82, maybe 82. Yeah. 82. Yeah. Well, most people probably encountered, you know, of our generation encountered, uh, computers at school first. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. Right. Well, yeah. they were very expensive. Used the computer. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Oh, we we got you now. Yep. You're back. It's, I rigged it up. I don't know how long it's going to last. It just broke. I crumbled. I hate this guy. Oh, uh, you hear me all right? Or something? Huh? No, we hear you yeah. perfectly. Yep. It's just the thing holding it to the arm, the arm thingy. So you're dealing Broke. with stone knives and bearskins right now. No, oh, it's no. getting rigged up. We'll see. But um, hey, Mars, Bucky, Mark, hey, hey, I'm an M M M M M M M M. So um, where was I? Let's see. We're talking about the uh, ORAC, uh, not a bane. Yeah, my anger down a little bit. Anger will get you know make things messed up. And I'm How's that it. high blood pressure? It was fine until this happened. <laughs> I'm trying to make <laughs> you laugh. Please laugh. Okay. Remember. Okay, so remember to laugh. No, okay, I'm, remember no, I'm to good. Laugh. I'm good. Yeah, I get it. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, this. All right. Uh. No, I'm good. All right, so let's see here. Uh, a Orac has his own little agenda, but he'll tend to their needs when he feels like it. The Liberator is under control. They do not know by Hume. Um uh avon and blake are at, at each other's throats of course because why not because they you know blake is just being very demanding and avon's just you know trying to get things done and he's uh he's as concerned as everyone but you know he's all the two of them just do not mix you know and that's just the way it is and that's what's one of the wonderful things about the show i think and uh blake is downtown fiddle and excuse me down in the engineering fiddling with stuff and gets attacked by the ship or is being held at bay by the ship Avon's got to come down there and bail him out, of course. 
and saves his ass, then of course Blake has to save his ass. A lot of ass saving going on, but uh, Blake's concern for our safety is inspiring, don't you think? Um, so <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of give and take between Blake and Avon here, almost like they don't like each other. <clears throat> you would think, huh? Yep, but when they're on the same side, they work well together, actually. Um, but no, I think Avon. for me, like, I don't want to spoil anything, but I think that we are marking the point where the relationship is going to fundamentally change and and Avon's part will be altered. And so now this is my my second time, I think my second time watching Blake 7. I, I've noticed that this episode begins to open up possibilities for Avon. Um, it's obvious now at this point in season two that he's very popular with the public, that people really like him. And he is a very strong character who, you know, is definitely Blake's equal, and so I think that's reflected in the writing. But that's just speculation on him on my. No, part. no, absolutely. He's at this point, and I wasn't there over there in, in the UK, of course. But by a lot of the things I've read, and, and when I've talked to fans from people who were fans in real time when the show was running and stuff, or people have read things they've talked about, mm -hmm. he was very pop. Avon was very popular, and um. And uh, again, Ray Ravenscroft is a good point. That and Boucher fell in love. Yeah, Chris Boucher and Robert Holmes, but especially Boucher. You know, this is still you know Terry Nation still wrote this one. He wrote everything mm -hmm. up, wrote everything in the first season, and he wrote this one. And um, eventually, Chris Boucher did a lot of great things with Avon as well. So he was yeah. really, I'm sure, when they first cast him, they, they had things planned for him, and it just kind of grew and grew and grew. And then by the time, yeah. by the time you know we're in the toward the end of the th first season, and now this now. It's it's called Blake Seven, but man, you know it's yeah. Avon's there. Uh, Tex, have a good one, brother. Night, Tex. Clocking good to see out. you, and, and thank you for stopping in, and thank you for Thanks, subbing. Buddy. We'll see Thanks, you soon. Buddy. Take it easy, bro. So, yes, the ship is taken over. Eventually, they come to the conclusion that Avon, you know, is just uh, they're saying, you know, is it is treating us like germs? Basically, <laughs> Bill said. But as he said, he said it's basically more fundamental than that. It's not. It's rejecting us, like a body rejecting, you know, antibodies, antibodies, and um, uh, which was rejecting an a disease or an illness or a fever. Yes. The ship, yep, yeah, as they would said, crude but accurate. And um, so they don't know what it is yet. Of course, like Avon even figures out, says, "Stay away from the teleport. Whatever happens, that's where it's all going to start." He knew. Avon suspe suspected. And uh, eventually, even Blake figured it out. They said, well, who is it? Goes, what do you think? Probably the ones, he says, the people who build the Liberator, of course, just taking back what's theirs, redemption. So, mm -hmm. And that's the deal. The, the, the system as shows up. This is when we first learn that the Liberator uh, Deep Space Vehicle 2 was uh, created or is a product of a um, of the board, oh, not the board, sorry, the system. <laughs> um, and uh, these uh, beings that we see, and let me guess, those are the ones they wanted to cosplay, right? Yeah, the David Bowie uh, people. David Bowie. You guys want me to cosplay that? I know. I, I will. I but can I'm... I can cosplay that if you guys want me to. You guys know that I take requests, so I I can absolutely that do was... that. That was someone in the chat being silly, right? Well, you well, had your at your at your watch party, right? At the watch party, yep. Yeah. So yeah. was well, this a, a typical, serious uh, request? No, I think so. Yeah, but um, as you said, that's that's an obscure, uh, you know. So that's the thing, like a fan of Blake Seven saw that would go right nuts, up my alley. But most people would be like, "Whoa!" I got to answer that? something here. The reason why Fiona, you, and others have asked this question, I love Warak as much as. Is, you only get four when you do a poll. They only give you four options, and the most four most popular characters on Blake Seven, obviously Blake and Avon, Villa, and arguably it's Callie's probably the third most favorite. I mean, you could put Gan there, maybe, maybe Jenna. Orak's popular, but at this point, still, I mean, you know, he's not as popular as Callie. Come on. So what was the I, poll? I, I just put. I have a poll in the chat right now. So, who's your? What's your favorite character on Blake oh. Seven? I've got Blake, Avon, Villa, and Callie. Mm, yeah, and you wouldn't put Orak at this point because we haven't built a relationship with Orak yet. 
And even still, at the front of the fourth season, I love Orak and all, and all fine. I love Zen, even, you know. Mm-hmm. But, you know, unless I put the people there. Yeah, YouTube, give us more choices for these polls. How much? Yeah, I wish they did. Play? They have like four, five, six choices. Yeah, that would be yeah. nice. Um, For the record, everyone in the chat, the first time I watched Blake 7, I thought Blake was the best thing since sliced bread. I was like, you go after those bad people. You get those murderers. You get those genocidal maniacs. Get them, get them. (laughs) And then, and now that I'm watching the second time, not only do I have a massive crush on Avon, but Paul Darrow, um, I've actually even Googled what he looks like off the show um, and what he looked like when he was old and he was still hot when he was old. It's ridiculous. Anyway, <laughs> now I love Avon. So I can safely say upon second watch of the whole series um, that Avon is far and away my favorite. Like ridiculously, he is my favorite. Huge crush on the guy. And I love his lines and I now love the character. I think instead of Cali, I guess I could have put Servalan. Well, Orac wouldn't really rank up there. I mean, I, I love Orac, don't get me wrong. And I, and Servalan might be my second favorite character on the show, P and Princess. I guess I would just stick it to the crew at this point. But yeah, um, you can also do two rounds of voting. That gets too complicated. Yeah, I mean, I would stick it to the crew, f- though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you could do like four characters. Whoever wins that goes against the, another three characters. I like, love that so many people in our chat are watching along with us or have watched this show before and are so passionate about it that they we want that they're asking for an expansion of the polls. This is a very successful um, relationship that we've developed here for Blake Seven. So thank you so much, everyone. I think that's terrific. And the boss will be forthcoming with more polls, but he a- also has um, constraints, right? Um, they don't really offer as many options as well, perhaps he would like. By the way, I, um, I if at least you all get a vote. I don't get a. I make them. I don't even get a vote. So there, <laughs> you're not allowed to vote <laughs> in your own poll, yeah. which I think is funny. Yeah, but because I, I would vote for Avon hands down, and it's not even close. But yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, here's what uh, Avon you know, would say about yeah. Blake would say about that. Do you think you could forget your superiority complex for a moment and get on with it? All right. Uh, <laughs> nice. Next clip is coming up. <laughs> it's just after that. Yep. He's hotter than heck. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just well, I like his coming. intellect. I don't know about the hotness, but I like his color. Oh, no, he's hot. It, when If a guy has intellect like that, he's definitely hot. <laughs> I'll trust you on that one. Yep. Yeah, you got to trust me on that as a nerd girl that that is way hotter than muscles like way hotter like, <laughs> it's like muscles I'm are glad like, i stopped working out <sighs> yeah and and like brains are like yay as was, what about gan i love gan i mean it's another great one yeah i mean they only give you four slots buddy so what can i tell you yeah 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 the box yeah. is limited unfortunately but um <clears throat> again at least you guys get a vote you know and we have <laughs> in fact we have 28 votes right now looks like and Avon has, is has in the lead, a big lead with 54%. Blake has 36. Uh, Avila has 11 and 4. Callie has 0. Oh, my goodness. Who's oh. in first place? I'm sorry. Avon with 54. Oh, oh of course. Of course. Of course. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, oh, who, who do you think? I mean, Avon's going to win and win that hands down every time. He must. Yeah. But when He's, I first watched this too. show, I would be like, Blake, 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 Blake. And now I'm like, nah. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah. There's Max. What about Taryn? He's not on there yet. I like. And by the way, I'll defend Taryn. I like Taryn a lot because you have to have somebody for Blake Avon to butt heads with. You know. So, but it's really just Avon's show. It always has been. Let's just be honest. So, all right. Where 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 we? Okay. So the ship is taken into this gigantic. It's too big to be a space station. This big, gigantic, really cool looking space station. And brought for in, you know Blake is brought in for interrogation. The others are put into uh, into uh, prison cells, and uh, we learn that well he doesn't learn much from these things because they're not very interested in anything Blake has to say other than answers. They ask him where he got the liberator. He explains um, wh- what happened. He tells them the truth, and eventually they decide well you know hey the well these things have no personality they have no interest in, yeah i'm not saying they're like the borg or anything or like the or like the daleks or anything or like the cybermen or anything or like the, but you know anyway you get the point um but 
Blake, who earlier had, uh, while he was being t- taken to the uh, interrogation chamber, had helped a poor uh, slave like lift up, you know, lift up something when he had been, uh, he dropped it, an older man. Later, when Blake makes a run for it and shoot, tries to shoot his way out, an older gentleman who is one of the slave workers in this just gigantic nuclear power plant that they filmed it at. I mean, this PlayStation. By the way, that was a really, <laughs> I, I, I love how they use like cool. these, these nuclear power plants. They look so cool. They make them look great. The locations person. Um, yeah, uh, they're really good. Yeah, the locations person is just an outstanding individual. Like, it's just, it is just pure pleasure every time they come up with um, one of these insanely futuristic buildings so industrial yeah. um, so believable plants. and so much scale like instead of grappling with um, budgetary constraints by building a set we go to this enormous place and it's entirely believable the way that they capture it on film so i doff my cap yeah. to, to the locations manager wow 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 so good so good ezra yes i do believe michael keating villa is still with us I think so, yes. Sally Nevet yes, is yes, also yes, still yes. with us. Jan Chapel, you know, uh, Stephen Pacey. A lot of them are still with us. Unfortunately, we've lost uh, Blake, Avon, and Gan. And Gan's the only, by the way, David Jackson, who played Gan, is the only one I ever got to meet, unfortunately. But anyway. Um, Did you so, miss out on meeting, meeting uh, uh, Avon please, at one point? Why, why oh, would you bring that up? Are you Claude or something? Oh, no. Claude gave me five bucks to mention that. God oh, damn it. Mark. Your agonizer, please. I mean, why do you have to make me go to all this work? All the way over there to go. God damn it, Mark. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, <clears throat> A, you know, Blake's trying to shoot his way out. He gets he gets uh, has some help from brought into this into this uh, hiding place, where we learn a little bit more about this than you know, this this uh, system. They call them the system. That's all that we know about them. And this older man tells he talks about how uh, before even before his father was born, this planet uh, had been taken over by a, basically AI. Basically, computers took over. You know, it's an old story. We've seen it in science fiction a lot, but at this point, you hadn't really. Um, and they had uh, taken over, and that this is where they uh, their launch point from. It was a, it was per, quote unquote protecting a planet, and that's that. We don't know much more about the system other than they created the deep space vehicle uh, two, which was they like, called the Liberator. Which we now call the Liberator, and the very and the technology and they use slave workers and stuff like that. So there's still organic people on the planet, but they were obviously taken over by their technology. And uh, that's pretty much all we, we learned just enough to know where the Liberator is from. And then, you know, uh, of course, Ava Villa is able to break out of his cell. He comes and they break, he breaks uh, Jenna and Ava out of the cell. They start running around trying to get away, but. They get caught, and they're about to be executed. And it's good. And uh, Blake and his friends show up at the last second, save their lives. Uh, the the uh, his new friend decides to stay behind. Unfortunately, doesn't last long, does it? And then they get uh, they get back to the Liberator, thinking maybe that it's back online now. They don't really have anywhere to go, but somebody's been sneaky, and that's Orac. Orak has been messing around and he's, he's able to, he gets, you know, he gets control of Zen. Now you guys can tell me if, you know, if, you know, I've always wondered, say anonymous gamer, good to see you there. Hey, how are you? I've always wondered exactly how, how Orak pulled that off, but he could control. I mean, you know, of course the, the, even this is so powerful, I guess they're so advanced. He, is, right? he can control. Yeah. Basically mm-hmm. he could control. He found a way to, uh, to change, I guess, change, Orax program, for lack of a better term, and counteract the control of the system mm-hmm. and get him back online. Mm-hmm. And the crew got back there in time and they were able to leave. And it turns out they're still like, well, yeah, but we still got the prediction running. And they said, well, like you said, that's the least of our problems. The Orax prediction, we're not going to worry about that. We just got to get out of here. They go to get out of here. And what are they followed by? Another deep space vehicle, another version of the Liberator. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, ORAC manages to uh, detonate its uh, missiles inside of it and destroy it because of his ego would not let his ORAC's or or ego is why they're alive because ORAC's ego is the reason he uh, he didn't he did not want his prediction to be wrong. Mm -hmm. And do so you think that prediction was originally the Liberator getting destroyed? Well. Or was that the, that was what he predicted all along? Maybe. But isn't that but isn't that the cleverness of the script for you to know. question? Because Orak interferes, and initially he doesn't want to interfere, and he in maybe it was self preservation on Orak's part. Yeah, because he's going to get destroyed too, right? He, yeah, and um, he is sentient, and then um, of course in destroying in in saving the original liberator and then this other uh and then destroying this other deep space vehicle he's vindicated um his prediction comes true but it also reveals that uh the future isn't certain and um obviously that orac will um is capable of doing things on his own acting of his own volition without any input from the crew so I think that this writing this in this way helps us to develop a relationship with Aurak. You know, um, the computer on Star Trek, we all know it's the queen, so we love the queen. When I hear the queen, I'm like, oh, God, there's the queen. Um, but we don't really develop a, a full a full on relationship with the computer on Star yeah. Trek. Here, yep. um, Terry Nation is writing in a way in which we begin um, to to see Orac as an actual character. He's a character inside of a box, and um, and this is where I think this is the genesis of it. This is this is where we learn that the the audience is very quickly going to fall in love with Orac and uh, him being cantankerous, uh, temperamental, <laughs> yes. um, and obstinate, <laughs> um, and dangerous sometimes. And dangerous sometimes. Yeah. So um, I think that, yeah, like I said, I think this is written this way uh, in order to tickle the audience's brain toward the idea that Orac is sentient and uh, is a character, is going to become a full fledged character on this show. Yes. Yes. I love him. And what a great addition to the show. I mean, you have that crew, and uh, Terry Nation was absolutely brilliant to. Come along and add this to the new season. Add a character. Well, actually, you know, he added it to the end of the first season, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. To add this new element. You've got, first of all, because there's only a few of these people, they get, you know, they would have no chance against the Federation without a ship like the Liberator. And even the Liberator, they're so they're so against it. He said, you know what? It's not credible for them to even have a chance, even with the Liberator. So mm -hmm. he creates our ORAC and uh gives them, I mean, they it almost doubles their power in a sense mm -hmm. and it's still no no guarantee of anything but it, it's obviously it has made blake in his in his crusade that much more powerful which is fascinating mm -hmm. yeah. and in the pro in the process has made blake that much more arrogant which you'll learn more about the season so uh number one notes i uh, don't have a by lot the way, of notes anyone else who wants to put their reviews up go ahead i'll, I'll get i'll store those while number one is giving the notes yeah. Okay, I don't really have a lot of notes uh, from okay. this week. I just wrote, um, I love the cool new intro. So there's been a little bit of production going on behind the scenes. And now we have a cooler new intro. So yay, yay, rah, rah, season two, better intro. Um, but not, it hasn't changed significantly, though, not enough to for me to be upset. It's just enjoyable. Um, I really like the opening scene of the heavenly bodies and the anomalies. Um, the, the, this take on the heavenly bodies is very alien. And I really like the fact that it looks as though there are numerous moons um, in within a short distance of one another. And then all of these anomalies in the background. And I just find it uh, as a science fiction fan, I find it incredibly inspiring, um, to, to see, um, this type of visual representation of what might be out there. You know, I've always thought to myself, what would the pinwheel galaxy be like? What would it be like to be in the pinwheel galaxy? And that's just been a dream that I've had for many years, just 
thinking in my mind what it would be like to have such a a, a, a busy and full galaxy to explore. So um, that's uh, that's part of being a science fiction fan. So I probably put a, a lot more emphasis on that opening scene than the average viewer, but I just had to remark upon the fact that I find it very enjoyable. Um, as a science fiction reader, um, so I don't get like a lot of my, like I don't watch a lot of films. Uh, I've, I've sort of changed it this last few years hanging around with geeks where I've started to watch um, films, but I'm a reader. I've been a reader my entire life. So I just want to say that I like the bookish quality of the following um, opening scenes where we have these quiet moments of the mundane. And so everyone is quietly doing maintenance. No one is talking. There's no flourish. It's just this really nice setting the scene for this hyper-technical atmosphere where um, folks have to do regular maintenance. And they're not sitting around talking like, you know, that television show Cheers. And it's not a, a soap opera where they're talking about whether or not Callie has a, a crush on Avon. We're, we're just getting some really great science fiction. And that means these beautiful, quiet moments that happen in books where folks are partaking in the mundane. And in this case, this quiet but beautiful little symphony of maintenance. Um, Avon's new costume, uh, I love the semiotics. Uh, Avon now appears dangerous. Um, it's much better. Uh, the the um, it sends the signal uh, that he is tough, and he's much tougher than he was before. The studded leather flapjack, uh, flap jacket, sorry, uh, uh, speaks to me as gunslinger and has a, a, a connotation that he might be quasi villainous. So yeah, I just really love the new costume. I love the semiotics. I think um, that they are spectacular. Now, aside of this lean gunslinger look, um, right next to that lean gunslinger serious look with a studded leather, um, uh, the slightly villainous, uh, we have Blake's jacket and it is voluminous is not even the word that I would use. <laughs> it's beyond voluminous. Um, and it's and it's in a pirate style. So we have these grand balloons um, extending from his arms down to his wrists. And, and they look like, you know, you could inflate them and have a, a, a marvelous airship. And the fact that it is, uh, you know, this fabric with this green leather, it just screams Robin Hood. And you know, Terry Nation has this notion um, that we should uh, feel um, Robin Hood sometimes in this show, and certainly we do. Um, I love the line, have you considered amputation? Uh, Avon says this. Oh. I just, yeah, I've got this shocking yeah, pain right behind the eyes. Have you considered amputation? That's yes. a great one. <laughs> Uh, yes. And I also loved what shall I do with the other arm? And of course, this is yes. Avon complaining <laughs> that Blake um, is throwing all of this technical, uh, throwing on this um, itinerary of technical things to do because he's not capable of doing them. Um, either he doesn't have the technical know-how or he just looks at Avon as somebody who could expedite those things um, it, and and that he can't, and so um, yeah, I it just says love Mr. Spock. <laughs> uh, well, um, yeah, like that. But also, it's almost as if Terry Nation goes past that, though, because it's almost as if we're having a moment where Blake is thinking out loud. And we're seeing a sharing of the of the leadership at this point. Yep. It's almost as if this is an outburst because he feels overwhelmed by the things that need to be achieved. And so, yeah, they're um, not a formal crew. It's not Kirk and Spock and the Federation. Exactly. Yeah. yeah and they're... so with Blake having this outburst, we see that that Avon um, must step out up because now the leadership is being shared. So this is very clever writing because we're seeing a shift that I don't want to talk about. Now, 
we talk about spoilers on this show and some people are like, you know, pish poshing that in the chat as though it's ridiculous we're even saying it. But some people are coming to Blake 7 brand new and I don't want to ruin it for them because half the joy in doing these reviews every week is our like is the fact that people come here and say, oh my God, I love Blake seven. So that's the reason why I'm protecting them. However, so I'm just going to leave that at that. But that shared leadership and that outburst revealing that he couldn't handle the the leadership role on his own and that the, the laundry list of things that needed to be accomplished, that it needed to be shared. And he didn't reach out to the crew. He reached out to Avon. And so this is very clever writing. Um, I also love the fact that Sargon um, made an appearance here. I've missed Sargon and it's great to see him um, the whole Liberator origin story is excellent, especially the Terminator storyline. I cannot tell you how much I absolutely loved that Terminator um, storyline and um, that, you know, we had these three worlds. They were constantly warring. Um, they put the machines in charge. The machines took over um, and took away all agency. And now we have a subjugated population on all three planets. And we have these automatons, or as uh, some folks would say in the Yukon, or not Yukon, in the UK, uh, automaton. I, I love it when I hear JK say automaton automaton instead of automaton yeah. yeah automaton but <laughs> i i just love hearing british um people say automaton um anyway uh so that whole idea is very very um uh, cool to give the sci-fi fan. The sci-fi fan is craving that. And of course, Terry Nation provides it. So that's what I mean by the Terminator storyline. Mm. Um, good, Eric... good night, Penny, by the way. Good night, Penny. Good night, Penny. Um, Oreck uh, uses psychohistory from Asimov's foundation. So it's very obvious that Terry Nation read um, Isaac Asimov's um, foundation series and ORAC uses psychohistory. And so uh, it's very important to uh, point this out to folks that might not understand what I mean by that. But um, so science fiction should be possible. OK, so it should be plausible. It should be based on fact and it should be possible in the near future or or remedied through technology, whereas science fantasy is magical. Magic things happen. So it's very important to realize that ORAC is not using, um, is not, uh, Terry Nation is not employing a science fantasy here. It's psychohistory. And, and the wording of the, what ORAC is doing is very careful in conveying the idea that it's psychohistory. And if you're unfamiliar with Isaac Asimov's foundation, psychohistory is when you take a whole bunch of um, events in history and you take a whole bunch of, of um, socioeconomic data and you aggregate it um, and then you can extrapolate a, a possible events uh, in, in the near future for human beings. So you're not predicting the future. You're actually um, employing psychohistory to give a possibilities for outcomes in behavior. And so I really liked that ORAC used psychohistory and that we know that that is coming from um, the 1940s um, Asimov Foundation um, series. So as a person who is a massive fan of Isaac Asimov, I just love seeing psychohistory and I loved seeing um, ORAC partake in that and give that to the viewers of Blake 7. And I gave this episode a 6.5 out of 7. It was very good. And now I'm going to be, now I am going to be quiet. <laughs> Mark? Excellent. Oh, Zapras. That was great. Yep. Hey, Zapras, what's up, buddy? Crap, crap, crap. <laughs> so we're get, we got a super chat from the great Michael Beacom. Thank you, Yay! Michael. Too kind. I hope Thank you and you. are doing well. Thank you. Because, hi, just dipping in for a moment. Can't stay. Have a great one and be seeing you until uh, Saturday. Now back to lurk mode. Well, Thank you for lurking out there and all of our lurkers. But Michael Beacom, I hope you and Cassandra are doing well. Thank you yeah. so much. Love you, Beacons. Have a great very, night. Very kind. And here's a thank few. You. Here, thank you. And here's a few clips for you that I just clipped. So I'll play that, play that for Michael. Imagine that you are standing on the edge of a cliff. As long as you're not standing behind me. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with him? 
What do you think? If it ever comes to a showdown, my money's on Blake. Well, half of it, I'll put the other half on Avon. <laughs> That's a safe bet. But if Avon is right, we'll probably all be dead anyway. Dead? Is that your idea of a safe bet? Uh, I mean, the more I watch this show, I mean, Blake obviously, I mean, uh, Avon has some of the greatest lines, but Villa also, too, has some fantastic. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Ooby dooby! Ooby dooby! Hey. Pass the tequila, please drink Perk. responsibly. Perk 130 is in the house. Nice. <laughs> well, my, Mark, you have the floor. If you can play sure, anymore, yeah. You let can... me, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I definitely uh, really enjoy this, of course, you know, with my uh, engineering background. I love anything to do with the ships, and I was hoping to find out more about the ship, but you don't, which is actually a tenant of some good writing, too. It leaves a lot to the imagination. You just learn, yeah. as you said, you learn just enough to wet your whistle, but you're still left thinking and wondering, you know, what is, who are these aliens and uh, why have they not encountered the Federation? I guess they're far enough away or they leave the Federation alone up to this point or, but that's a mystery. We don't, we don't know. I There's mean, there's so many mysteries they left that we never, ever, 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 I mean, yeah. ever yeah. have answered. Well, yeah, or well, maybe it's answered up. later in the series. Jake I'll just Kirk. leave it like that. <laughs> JT Kirk. Kirk. He is Kirok. The only thing is, of course, they should have known that they were, uh, you know, that the same tech as a Liberator when you look at the intercepting ships uh, on the screen. And um, the cool thing is, you know, from 3D printing the Liberator, someone had actually made that version of the interceptor ship because it's basically the same parts. It's, uh, it's some of the parts of the ship. So it's the uh, the rear section. In that middle section with the you know the cell there so you i i might someday print that you know print a few of those chase ships as well with the red uh, the red globe and that's a great way to uh you know recycle things but make them look different and cool right you know you've got uh you know a smaller section of the ship and you can tell it's uh, from the same tech and uh, i just thought that was really cool so the same person the 3d printed said oh you can also make the uh, you know the chase ships if you just take those are pretty cool take these three parts so eventually i'm going to do that because it's not need. like you need you... a liberator in your office well i'm just speaking for me i should be using me i need <laughs> a liberator in my office what would you do with i want to hang it from fishing line and then have the two pursuing smaller ah. ships behind it mm. <laughs> wouldn't nice. it be That's cool the... and then you could get like um cocktail straws and and like yep. have the 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 ships the the attacking ships the little guys like firing on laser. the liberator you just need yeah. cocktail straws <laughs> would look pretty cool right yeah well, would I, look I, totally I will eventually cool. get a, are you kidding I'll, I'll eventually get around to doing that but uh it's actually not that difficult because you already have like i said you've already got the parts it's just the combination of the uh that front part of the, yeah. the cell and the back part so uh, I'll, I'll eventually I'll send uh, you the cocktail straws. Do, do you remember when I sent you the tribbles? Yeah, those are awesome. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Playmobil sized tribbles. Um, Herc 130, I love you too. I also want to say that um, I love Mary. Mary is another reader, and I just love all the comments uh, that Mary is making in the chat tonight. So I love you both very much. And here's You're making what I learned to read. <laughs> So here, oh, uh, oh, that one. Zathras. Zathras. Yeah, I was just. Zach! I was almost going to say that. Then I. Like, Jay. Don't read that out loud. Zathras, you loud. bad boy. <laughs> your, your agonizer, please. Yep, yep. <laughs> so uh, I do have some uh, some show notes from the uh, from the wiki here as I roll okay. for uh, Zathras. Yep, um, but. Um, so some story notes. Uh, this is the first episode of Blake's seventh second season of, in both production and transmission order. This marks the end of a run of 14 ep consecutive episodes written by Terry Nation, which is impressive. Yeah? For the first time, Oric is voiced by Peter Tundenheim, mm -hmm. who provided the voice of Zen. Ben. He remained in the role until the, until the last episode. Uh, the Space World interiors were filmed in Aldbury on Severn Power Station, Bristol, which also doub doubled for the Federation Complex and the Time Squad. The cast did not enjoy filming there due to the high risk factor. At the end of each day, everyone had to be tested for radiation. Wow. <laughs> At one point, Sally Kivette, and that's uh, Jenna, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Crackled and had to be brushed down. 
everyone was allowed to eat their meals there, but they weren't allowed milk and eggs, which didn't sit well with Jan Chappelle, Callie, who was nursing a young son, son at the time. While filming the explosion, several security personnel came in. Uh, I don't know, that's poorly written. While filming the scene where the crew escaped through a heavy door, the actors could only go through a few feet as it led to a dangerous area. <laughs> Wow. Chappelle had to close in her contract for the next series that she wouldn't film in such such a place again. <laughs> yeah. Um, Paul Darrow was knocked off his feet when the explosion went off too early. It was slightly more powerful than it anticipated. This is noticeable in the episode. I guess is that in the uh, in the ship, maybe? Is that in the beginning? Uh, when Must the be. Liberty gets, I don't know, but I'm going to rewatch it that now. Later? In check. Yeah, Must yep. be. Uh, Harriet Philbin had previously appeared in the Do- in the Doctor Who serial Genesis of the Planet Dialects, which was also written by Terry Nation and scored by Genesis Dudley Simpson. Genesis of the Daleks. Genesis, oh, thank you, yep, Daleks, yep. Uh, rating, 7.9 million peoples, which is pretty darn good. And, of course, it was filmed at that uh, nuclear power station, I guess, and on uh, set. Uh, production errors, it says, to be added. They don't list anything there, yep. Okay, continuity. Oryx prediction of the Liberator parents' destruction occurred in Oryx, you know, the episode before. Uh, Blake, Jen, and Avon first boarded the, Liber- boarded the Liberator in Spacefall. Blake gives a partial account of the events here. The Atlas know the Liberator's deep space vehicle too, reflecting the fact that Zen did not refer to it as Liberator until Cygnus Alpha. And that's when Jenna, he reads Jenna's mind, Jenna's if I'm mind. correct, right? Yeah, which is, yep. does he do that any other point, reading reading people's minds? Or I'm not. Smile. Well, he does it as a part of the defense system. And then yep. later, when he was first getting to learn their language and stuff, but doesn't need it anymore because he already. Yeah, I guess. Yep, yep. He could, yeah. Uh, and the last yeah, one right. is that. It is unclear whether Oryk follows Blake's instructions to program Zen to only respond to recognized crew members, but a similar system is in play. Uh, is it, well, I won't read that last half because that uh, uh, mentions an episode name. So it's a minor tidbit spoiler, but uh, not really. But uh, So uh, in edited form, so this was uh, okay. released on video in 1991. Fabulous Films reissue, 1998. And DVD release, and that's that new opening. The beginning part's a new opening for season two. That's CGI. That's mm-hmm. from the DVD box set in oh, 2005. Yeah, I, I have think. those. Oh, so totally. yes, when you watch that new opening, uh-huh. the one part that looks much snazzier. Yeah. That's the uh, CGI. It looks like CGI. Uh-huh. That is uh, part of the DVD set. So that oh. was 2005. So we okay. haven't gotten anything. Okay. You know, unfortunately, we haven't gotten a Blu-ray. Although I think this is, looks like it was filmed on film, so they could do a Blu-ray for this. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, there's not enough interest. But maybe someday, fingers crossed, we'll get uh, we'll transfer that over because uh, God, even if it was streaming, I mean, it's it's so good as it is, it doesn't really it bother video. me that much. But uh, you know, they could. Uh, well, if it is on, if it is on film, it's a no-brainer to. Uh, you know, just get a little bit clearer. It'll be it would be nice to to see it, but uh, you don't have to have it. But that's just me with my, you know, <laughs> uh, audio file, video file, uh, nerd in me. <laughs> but uh, I would, me. yeah. But it's good. It doesn't it doesn't have to have it. It's uh, it's mm-hmm. pretty good. But I'm gonna give this one a, a seven out of seven because uh, you got awesome ships. Um, you've got a great um, some great lines, uh, great. Quips. So you, you learn a little bit about the Liberator, but not not too much. Mm-hmm. And it really shows the crew a little bit splintering too between Blake and Avon, but they still work together as a team. But you can see there's a there's a lot of uh, uh, power jacking for control. Or mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the episode when uh, uh, Blake basically doesn't he say uh, take, your, take order. your place, take your yeah. position, yeah, now. take your position, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that. That was, uh, and then Avon kind of looks at him, and uh, mm-hmm. you know they're not really friends here; they're just kind of getting along with each other and uh, mm. uh, tolerating, you know, uh, tolerating each other. So that yeah, Blake's it, annoying right now. Yeah, he's not appreciative of <laughs> whatever because he's can't get it done without him. You know, I keep comparing it to Star Trek; it's obviously not, you know, Star Trek, but just. Uh, you know, Kirk, you know, you've got that command structure. There's no set mm-hmm. command structure. They're just thrown together. So 
it's very interesting that uh, you know how the, the crew dynamic there you know if, if this is a military organization you know avon you know would would grim and bear it right <laughs> so uh uh but uh and also of course the 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 end you know the ending that great flip where it's the sister ship of the uh, liberator getting destroyed so that's uh that was a great uh because your whole time you're like well oh, now they're going to get destroyed and the crew is basically giving up villa's giving up you know we're, we're we have no chance let's just uh you know get, prepare to pre prepare to die basically and uh yeah. and they all give up and then it turns out Oric uh, gets the job done so yeah it's a great great episode uh, all around cool yeah, I well, I just want to address one one thing before because um, the folks have patiently been waiting for me to respond to this. Uh, yeah, you know, in in this is 1979, right? It, we haven't hit 1980 yet. 79. It's 19, yeah, it's 1979, and it's just turned 1979. Okay, so in Canada in 1979, all guys had waist length hair. They all had waist length hair. They all looked like Ozzy Osbourne, but with like super, super <laughs> de duper long hair. So um, uh, I do think that it's cool that Avon has this hair um, in 1979. And yes, I think he is a cutie patootie and I love this haircut. But um, it is quite trippy for me because, you know, like I grew up in the 1970s to see these uh, hairstyles again um, and to see how different they are in the UK than they than they were in Canada at the time. Um, and you'll you'll be reminded that Canada didn't even have its own flag until 1965. Right. We're members of the Commonwealth. So, um, yeah, uh, the only person's hair who I think is totally ridiculous is Blake's hair. I mean, Blake's <laughs> hair is out of control. Um, it's just, it's ridiculous. Um, but yes, I love um, Avon's hair. And I think it's very daring um, for 1979. He would have looked completely alien in 1979, um, at least in Canada at the time, which was dominated by hippies and rock music and rock music, rock music. Um, I didn't really grow up in an area where um, there was a lot of Beatle mania or, or people like the, uh, the monkeys and, and, and stuff like that. This was more of a, where I grew up, it was, was a lot of hard rock people. And that could have something to do with the fact that I grew up in a professional band. So that, that could have something to do with it. Almost everyone in my life was a musician, um, a professional musician. So that could have something to do with it. But anyway, I hope that answers the question. Um, sorry for interrupting. Go ahead, Claudia. Well, well as you know, I'm, I've had rank every episode of Blake Seven. All I have all fifty-two episodes ranked, and uh, this one, episode fourteen, it's episode one of season two. Ugh, Redemption, I have ranked at number twenty-eight. I'm gonna give it a solid five rating out of seven. It's uh, twenty-eight and number five. Okay, I'm gonna put that on my spreadsheet. Oh, a spreadsheet now. Forgot. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm. Only five out of seven. Wow. Okay. Well, well I mean, it's not perfect. Like there, there are some things with it that that's a high rating, man. That yeah, that's a super <laughs> high joking. rating. But it's not. I gave perfect. it a seven. That's okay. and and perfect, the scoring yeah. is so high for this show. Like for me, this show is like UFO. You know, it's not it's not as high as UFO for me. Yeah. It's a little below UFO. But this show is so cerebral, and the scripts are so incredible like truly truly high quality that um they're all going to get high ratings but no this isn't terry nation's best but it's certainly well, not i love his it work. yeah and i love I, it too if i give something a five remember that's it's that it's in the top it's in the top 30 and that's i mean out of 52 episodes you don't really get to episodes that i have serious problems with till you get into the like the, mm -hmm. look into the 40s you know something like that so and i still yeah. yeah so anyway um <clears throat> we have some Oh, we have a review from Ravenscroft. Ravenscroft has a review for us. Oh, nice. Let's see, Let's see here. Seven Avons. All right. Seven Avons. Uh, let's see here. One of the best Blake Sevens, in my opinion. Uh, a welcome relief from Federation plots. Yeah. And a great reveal of on the origin of Zen. Mm -hmm. Hope they become a recurring foe. I have a lot of theories about that that I won't go into here, but yeah. I, I mean, I have a whole backstory created for the system I've done over the many, many years and stuff. <laughs> um, 
the characters have all have all have good moments. Orak gets to be the hero. Nice action sequences and real menace from uh, the cool villains. Loved Gans Cape. Yeah, I love Gans Cape. Mm. Uh, I live for Blake and Avon moments. Yeah, they're the best. Uh, <clears throat> and the ship attack uh, provides this very well. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most complex relationships in any, any genre ever. I totally yeah, agree, great Ravenscroft. Comments. Great comments. Totally agree, Ravens. Uh, in a deeper sense, this could be seen as the ultimate future for the Federation, mm -hmm. ruling a galaxy of compliant automatons but with a no freedom uh, who live only to serve. Bravo, Terry yeah. Nation. Yeah, yeah. Bravo, bravo. Agreed, points, agreed. Yeah. What a, Nicely what a said. Ravenscroft, thank you. Very, very, very well said. Uh, love this episode. I mean, I love the episode. Don't get me wrong. I've always loved it. And uh, we're getting, we're in the second season now, baby. The second season is probably my favorite. Um, although That's I love, I actually love three. And I, I even, I'm one of those fools who loves four. Hmm. But I uh, we have another one. Yeah, I was just going to say that yeah, that's a great point to bring out the dystopian future that, uh, you know, Blake has been fighting. So when he helps that guy in the hallway, you know, the 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 system is basically the Federation, as you just said, Ravenscloft, you know, more advanced and uh, more in control. So that's the that's what's uh, horrible. So horrible about it. That's uh, in some ways even maybe worse than the Federation. We just don't know in terms of how advanced their computers are in their technology. But uh, the Federation would strive for that, it looks like. Yes, indeed. It's just absolutely. It's, uh, Larry, Larry, Larry says uh, five out of seven, the same out of seven out of ten. Indeed, it's just. Thank you so much. Larry, Larry, Larry. And look at what Mars Monkey Max Mars did. Monkey Max says, really? I only gave I only gave one Avon, two Orax, and six engine room <laughs> rats. I'm not sure whether he liked it or not. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I love you guys so much. Thank you to everyone not, in, in the I, chat. I, you guys are such great friends. I love each and every one of you. Such terrific conversation tonight. Thank you, everyone. Six inch room rat. So I'm not sure if that's a high, a high praise or not. I can't figure it out. Ravenscloth says, um, uh, the tension really ramps up in season two. Uh, boy, howdy, does it ever. Are you guys using a standard scale, says Putin? No, since the show's called Blake 7, I'm figuring it's, we're doing one to seven. Yes. So just for the fun of it. How many, and that is um, because a lot of the folks who are regulars here who love the show, they really love Blake 7. Um, we have um, a memberships here and they're actually able to um, use Avon um, to <laughs> the little Avon um, icon that I made. They, they use that to show how many uh Avon's out of seven it is so it's amusing yeah. and we have a good time doing it so yes we do we do it out of seven Blake seven yes how many As Avon's out of Blake sevens yes Putin Sanders seven is the standard although I have cheated and ranked some of them seven plus 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 but those, we haven't gotten to those yet uh <laughs> It's high praise, Globby. Engine room rats are a delicacy. Got you covered. Thank you. Thank you, MMM. Not as good as clam pizza, obviously. Max Redstone says, B plus ranked this as, uh, he has it ranked at number 17 versus Globby's. 28, yep. Great costumes and a great story. Wow, and he mm -hmm. only gave it a B plus. Well, he is a tough, he's a tough room that Max Redstone. Just missing, just kidding, Max. Uh, 6.4 out of 7 for Fiona. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Very Fiona. Close to mine, Fee. indeed Excellent. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, well, there you go. I love, like I said, I do love it. I mean, but, but hey, I'm, you know, I, I'm a tough room because, like I always said, my, um, <clears throat> my sevens don't start until I get down to, to episode number 20. My first 20 is at numbers, is a, wow. is a solid seven. So 20 on down is bunch of sevens until we get like toward into the top 10 i get some seven pluses and some seven plus but you know stuff like that of my favorite episodes so i mean i've got out of 52 episodes i've got 20 of them ranked at seven and then i got like a whole pot a passel of sixes and fives you know there's nothing nothing lower than a five from 30 on down actually 32 on down Nothing lower than a five. So that's pretty, I think that's pretty, means I love me some episodes, doesn't it? I think Yeah, so. I give them all high. Uh, that's some love. Well. I enjoy them. They're all enjoyable. That's some love right there coming well, from. Five uh, is, 
five is a B plus, or what would you rate a five as like a B? I guess it's something around those lines, like a B plus or a or yeah, yeah, about a B plus is fair enough to say, yeah, big five. Rough. I have some five and a half or something, yeah. So yeah. But anyway, yeah, love this episode. And now we are started season two. Oh my goodness. Next week will be Shadow, if I'm not very much mistaken. And uh that's something there. Boy. Mm -mm. Some good lines in that one, too. Well, they're great lines in all of them. Uh, Have you considered amputation? That's one of my favorite. <laughs> yeah, play that again. Yep. Oh, let's, let's play, it play it again, Sam. Yeah, there we go. For more this, there. Yep. Yes, let's reminisce some more about this episode. Everybody got to get to it first. Wow, it's way down here. Uh, Wait out the uh, bottom. Yep, there's a bunch of new I got ones. You. Yep. Oh, there we go. Do you think you could forget your superiority complex for a moment and get on with it? All right. Imagine that you are standing on the edge of a cliff. As long as you're not standing behind me. I've got this shocking pain right behind the eyes. Have you considered amputation? What's the matter with him? What do you think? If it ever comes to a showdown, my money's on Blake. Well, half of it, I'll put the other half on Avon. <laughs> That's a safe bet. But if Avon is right, we'll probably all be dead anyway. Dead? Is that your idea of a safe bet? Go back to your position. Waggle. I want to have one more. I just did. Tension. Oh, okay. I love the clip. I never, never stop. What shall I do with the other arm? No, yeah. Is that all? What would you like me to do? What shall I do with the other hand? They took know. the precaution of scrambling their launch system. It pre-detonated their missiles. Had I not done so, my prediction would have been inaccurate. All right, you are a genius. Quite. <laughs> Quite genius. Now, you, you, you foolish humans, you be allowed to get back to my work. You see, <laughs> him tell you, it's Orax ego. That's all he cared about. He's great. You're right. I love that. Orac. delivery is, yeah, yeah, that delivery is so great with that voice. Yeah. Now, kindly leave me to get back to my stars. You humans stop bothering me so much. Look at how cute um, Paul Darrow is. Paul Darrow is so damn cute. I don't know. He is. He's how cute. adorable. Ah, he's the man, is all I know. I don't yep, care about I'm getting this. the Leonard Nimoy vibes. He's the badass. Him. You know he's, what I mean? Oh, wow. Yeah, I really he's like him. All I know is I love that snarl he talks with sometimes. One of my favorite lines of his of all time was uh, If you didn't want the answer, you shouldn't have asked the question. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, we got that in there if you can find it. <laughs> That's from the fourth season. You got a fourth season? No, I, I just really like Have You Considered oh, Amputation? Fourth. That's fourth, okay. Yep, uh, oh. that's why you're the expert, not me. Let's see. You're right. We got to do it one more time. I got this shocking pain right behind the eyes. Have you considered amputation? The great line next week. I'm going to go ahead and just give you a little teaser for next week when <laughs> when uh, he says to Blake, Blake wants to use the the mafia to fight the Federation, and that line by Avon. He goes, when he says, "How are we going to convince him?" He goes, "Well, by force, if necessary." He goes, "Force." Yes, of course. Lawmakers, lawbreakers. Let us fight them all. Why not? <laughs> all right, folks. We have blaked it now. And uh, man, I just I could blake seven all night, but we got other things to do. So. <laughs> now we're going to get moving on to Star Trek Untold Voyages. Yeah. So I have to tell everyone in the chat, everyone who reads physical stuff, and uh, that would be the Ginger Menace. And of course, my Larry Larry. No one else um, reads. If you have a copy of a Star Trek Untold Voyages, a July 1998, episode five, we're going to get at it. Does anyone else read uh, the... Did the Menace has that comic? No, but I'm telling her about it because guess what? Mary participates. Do you know that she's watching the Star Trek episodes? She already oh. watched. Yeah. Oh. She's somebody who participates. Oh, She's really smart and cool. And um, and she oh. also likes physical books like Larry uh, Larry and I do. So uh, yeah. I definitely want to into, uh, include her in that circle. You know who I miss? I miss <clears throat> um, Jill because there at one point Jill was here and I think she was reading the comics as well. So Did she read the comics? I don't know that. Uh, yeah, I think I think she said that um, that uh, she would uh, consider sharing the comics with her um, with her children on the last series that we did. So whenever I can encourage folks to buy comics from mm -hmm. their local comic book shops, absolutely, I'm going to do that. 
Uh, Ravenscroft, thanks for being here. We appreciate you. Good night, Ravenscroft. Uh, yeah, Good have night. a great night. You know, Zephyr says, I just like Star Trek Strange. No, you don't. Get out Zephyrus, of here. Zephyrus, if you like strangled dude worms, um, I'm just afraid that you're in trouble. <laughs> you really like strangled dude worms? Get out of here. Brain and brain. What is brain? I mean, I'm afraid. Your, your agonizer, please. Yeah, and um, but what, what else? Is there? Oh. Double dumbass on you! <laughs> Absolutely, well, I'm sorry, but Babylon Five is better than that crap. Washing my hands. I love you, Larry. <laughs> I'm afraid Zapras is going to have to go to the agony He's booth. He's just saying that for a joke, brother, right? Yeah, I, put him in the I, agony booth, set it, and forget <laughs> it. Ron Poe peel him in the agony booth. Ron it's the Pope only answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so let's uh, we can lose. I have one more thing to show related to this episode. Okay. <laughs> one more. The mashup I did, but let me. I'm just saving it to the uh, computer here. Okay. Export it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh go for it let me oh, i just gotta save it here oh, i'm gonna save it to the right spot hold on here i've got too Zach. many uh files on my my folder here, here Zathras, right. you are fired you are terminated <laughs> you want the agony zathras like agony booth zathras don't like it but zathras does like it so send Zathras to the agony booth, but not Zathras. He doesn't like it as much. <laughs> you big rascal. I love, I love Zathras. Even if he does say nasty things like strangle dead worms. He does it to get your goat. <clears throat> yeah, but we still love him. I yeah. do love him. He's a he's a troublemaking. He is a yes. wonderful troublemaking person who I adore. Well, let's be clear. Zathras is a troublemaker, but Zathras is not a troublemaker. And Zathras it's definitely okay. <laughs> Zathras himself, he's he's uh he's probably so if I love uh, you're, you, Max. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're if you're following uh, the Doom two Dune two uh, premiere, <laughs> I think Zinjana, I think she they copied the outfit from Blake Seven. Woo! Oh yeah, I saw that. She looks insane. <laughs> or that she's like hurt. Maria. That had to hurt, by the way. Look at her arms. It's absolutely yeah. nothing to do with Dune. No, she looks well, like she's it, can't she store a lot of water in that suit? She, I mean, no, <laughs> fluent and and certain millions of forms of communication. She's see three PO. I'm certain she's perspiring profusely, but that's not a still suit. <laughs> yeah. But uh, well, she, she it worked arms. though. She got it. She got attention. But then who who posted? Someone posted. My God, what if you had to go to the bathroom in that suit? I'd panic. Yeah, Zathras. Yeah. No, we cannot talk about Stephen Collins. Thank you. Except for when he's. You know, if you want to talk about him, it's his role in Star Trek. Other than that, no. Yep. We'll talk about Commander Will Becker, and I suppose so. But other than that, no. You bad boy. Yes. No, yeah. By the way, yeah. This... Did you see hmm? Mary? Will you read Mary's, please? The ginger. Uh, we'll see. Oh, Mary says, um, "Yes, I watch and try to stay up, uh, kept up with you guys. Oh, that's cool. I am a Trekkie, but I wasn't ever a Janeway fan, so I started watching so I could participate. Yes, love my books. Gotcha. Love gotcha. you. Well, Mark and I don't have any books at all or comics. Well, yeah, I have just here. things with pictures. With pictures. No, we just do digital. We don't do physical." Get lost. Yeah. I hate the way the old comic books smell. You know, it just makes me. Uh... Get out of here. <laughs> Actually, you know, as far as doing the show, digital is a necessity because I like to show the comics. On. Ew. But uh, I have, we mean, ew, that's how we're able to show the comics on the show. I know. Uh... <laughs> and it's easy for me with my eyesight. But yeah, anything, any comic that I want, though, that I like, I want the physical copy. You have Berserk? Wow, that's a lot. I mean, all of it? You know how much that is? I mean, how much? How much? Ron uh, Garney. How many there are? I should have gotten my cousin to ask Ron Garney to send oh, me. Oh, Berserk. Sign. I was thinking of the old anime thing. But yeah, no, that yeah. Berserk. You, you got the one by Ron Garney? Okay. Yeah. Because cool. my cousin's friends with Ron Garney. So yeah. I, I did get the uh, Grim Noir from, uh, signed by him. That's I right. You, you, you feel. It's like you don't want to take advantage of family and friends, but sometimes you just should, I think. <laughs> what? <laughs> but that's true. That chick from the redemption she was in Genesis of the Daleks. I remember her name from that. So um, 
What's up? What are we doing? Oh, Star Trek, right? Yeah, comic nice. book, right? Star, Star Trek, comic, Trekking. Right? Oh, yeah. Star Trekking across the universe. And it's such a beauty prize under Captain Kirk. Star Trekking across the universe. Slowly going forward because we can't ride reverse. Let's see. They're going on from the Starfleet Bow, Starfleet Bow, Starfleet Bow. Sting us on the pirates. I'll scrape him off, Jim. Where's my? It's life, Jim, but not as we know it. Not as we know it. Not as we know it. Life, Jim, but not as we know it, Captain. Maze. Mazerus. Hey, hey, hey. I'm trying to find my bloody. <laughs> JT Kirk exploitation begins at home. Shin kicks. <laughs> Shin kicks. Thumbs up, JT. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay. Is we Red Riri? Yes. Sure. We's Red Riri. Okay, here we go, folks. Tonight, but never our final uh, issue of Star Trek Untold Voyages. Let's get started. Comic Star Trek comic book review on Clever Times Clubhouse. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's go. 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 Let's
Um, so anyway, there's uh, they they adapted the motion picture, then they did a, a, their own standalone series of new adventures for about 16 issues or so, 16, 18 issues. And then DC picked it up, a, they, they canceled it, and DC picked it up a couple of years later. The DC did it for well over a decade. Um, both like at the time, the two licensing the, the original crew, and then later, uh, they did the next generation comics. And then eventually, um, Malibu got their hands on the uh, DS9 comics and the Voyager comics. But in 1997, Marvel got together with Paramount. They created Paramount Comics and started producing uh, comics based on all the series and a couple of other types of comics um, that were different, that were based on the Trek universe. And uh, we've reviewed one called Star Trek The Early Voyages. That went like, what was it, 17, 16 issues? I want to say something like that. Mm, something like that. 16, something like that, yeah. 17. So, right. I and think. now for the past uh, four weeks, we've reviewed uh, a series called Star Trek Untold Voyages. And now the final issue of that is number five. And this series takes place, it took place, the first issue was right after Star Trek The Motion Picture. And these stories take place in between Star Trek 1 and 2. And now you have the final issue right here. Mm -hmm. Close Encounters. Well, as uh, I noticed that Larry Larry noticed the same thing I did when I was reading it tonight. That this is another one where they uh, gave the story two names. So on the front cover it says Close Encounters. But right. inside it says Odyssey's End. Yes, the editorial staff, uh, left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing at the same times because, you know, I mean, it's not the only time it's ever happened in comics, by the way. Marvel's been notorious for that, even DC sometimes. But yeah, it's kind of, it is kind of odd, especially for a Star Trek comic, but yeah, you know, but not unheard of by any stretch. So, uh, here we go. Of course, you have a, you don't need the recap in this case, other than it shows you some of the stuff that happened in previous issues because they're, they're not really that per, uh, pertinent to this story. Are each of these issues one year apart? I'm, I'm trying to remember. Mm -hmm. or seem, the, they or are. Close to it yeah. seems uh, like because they're on a new five-year mission, right? March 1998, April 1998, May 1998. No, no, I'm sorry, Rika. I mean, I mean, in the actual story, it seemed like they were picking up like... Oh, in like the actual one, story. Oh, okay. Yeah, it seemed like they were picking up um, like a, a, a tale to tell from each of the new five-year voyages, if I'm remembering correctly or something you know it's just they're not very close together it seems no they feel like uh, they're jumping all over the place right i agree uh, um there's something oh, oh yeah it says one year later hey. yeah the bottom right yeah one year yeah. later yeah oliver bellamonte good to see you hey oliver um, oh uh, did something happen to fiona let's see she said could i undo that maybe she uh, well there's something happening there. Oh, oh got a uh, 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 butt band. It looked like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, well, it, it happens. Believe me, Alton. Yeah, I've been banned oh. from this channel. Yes, <laughs> yes, he has banned <laughs> for evil purposes. So, um, here we go. Captain's log, star date seven nine. I can barely see. My oh, seven seven eight. Let's see. Uh, seven nine oh nine uh, point eight hike. Uh, after five years, our mission of exploration aboard the refitted Starship Enterprise is finally coming to an end, and we will soon begin the long voyage home. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> oh, get it, get it. Sorry. Okay. Uh, they hit Glenn, you in the head with it. Indeediousness. Uh, Glenn Greenberg, writer. Michael Collins, penciler. Keith Williams, inker. Matt Webb, colorist. Chris Eolopolius, blah, 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 sorry, VC, VC, Letra. Uh, Tim Tui, editor, Bob Harris can go to, sorry, um, the, I mean, Bob Harris, chief of nothing. So, let's see. At the moment, however, a reception is underway on the recreation deck to celebrate a very special occasion. Star Trek Untold Voyages, Odyssey's End. I like that better than... Close encounters is too yeah. on the nose there, but yeah. Um, too much recycling of the name. Well, Let's make it Odyssey's well, end. You know, blurbs on covers never, they rarely use the actual title of the story anyway. So this is not 
anywhere close to a big deal, but I hear you. Uh, kind of weak penciling on this opening crowd scene here. You guys are really in a hurry. They were looking in a hurry. Security Chief Pavel Chekhov has been promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Commander and will be leaving the fold to join the crew of the USS Reliant, where he will serve as first officer. Well, that's pretty nice, isn't it? Yeah. And so, um, uh, you know, it's almost a shame you two were promoted to full commanders a, a couple of months ago. The three of us uh, could have finally held the same rank together. He said he's not talking like Chekhov, though. Uh, you'll you'll catch up so we'll catch up someday, Pavel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but until then, I will say, "Oh my," and keep you humble. <laughs> I like that banter. That's pretty. I can picture them saying that. Yeah, they should banter. This is a funny exchange here because this is more fan content. Yes, why Starfleet have to change the uniforms again? I like the gray ones. Uh, this was total. People used to make fun of the motion picture uniforms all the time. I used to have to, yeah, you know, Doomcock went off and boom. Yeah, but call me a communist. What? Okay. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, so back to the comic. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think this is funny because, of course, um, as I've spoken about before, and perhaps those in the audience have seen the same footage that I have seen, um, is, of course, that those original uniforms were more closely linked to what Gene Roddenberry, how Gene Roddenberry wanted it to look. Oh, yeah. And of course, I absolutely love TMP. Um, but uh, the, the inside joke here, I think, is the fact that many fans had the knowledge that the, the actors were divided on um, the uniforms. Um, people think that, you know, it was unilateral that like one uniform or the other um and you know there is a more militaristic look to the red uniforms but um there were several actors amongst the the cast who were quite happy to have a belt and a jacket because it meant that they didn't have to wear girdles so yeah. it wasn't just one or two people it was a couple of people who were pretty happy that they didn't have to cut a whole bunch of weight which they would have had to to um accomplish if gene roddenberry would have had um his way which was for everyone to look very sleek and very futuristic with those um with those elasticized um what did they call them when they put when they when you put the, the well, little, spandex or no no the little hook that went over your foot what were they called again velcro no, the little hook that went over your foot that was elastic. What were those called again? By the way, good night, Chris Persia. Good, good night, night Chris. Chris. I love you. Anyway, uh, stirrup pants, stirrup pants. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so it doesn't. They don't. Yeah. yeah don't so I, I actually thought that this is kind of a cute moment because it's like revealing all the stuff that everyone was talking about at conventions who was for the red uniform who is against and why yeah. and so they're the people who are slimmer in the cast and and they don't mention any names of course but they have huge smiles on their faces while they're talking about it yeah um the slimmer the naturally slimmer cast members loved the gene roddenberry um uniforms because they were very futuristic and very comfortable whereas those who were struggling a little bit with their weight as they were aging were quite happy to have the jacket and the belt. <laughs> and I love this. Uh, uh, yeah, that looks exactly like McCoy. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a great uh, panel there. And Kirk is pretty good, Spock. But McCoy, a great likeness of, uh, of uh, Bones there. And that's something he would say. So when you're in character, I just love hearing, you know, this first few, even just first few panels. It's like I can picture that being on a TV show. Do you hear their that. voices? I hear, I their, hear voices their voices while I'm reading yeah. it. Yeah, you do. Well, yeah. And Lisa McCoy liked those better. Yeah, like those yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, they were and probably in real life too, because D DeForest Kelly, Jackson DeForest Kelly was svelte. He was he was, he was a, a fine hit. looking man all the way up until the very end. So yes. So I said I was almost it was almost like wearing pajamas. So pajamas are for some sleeping doctor. Not running because I got a buddy of mine that always called the motion picture the pajama party. That's what he called it. <laughs> that was his name for it. 
Uh, Mr. Chiku, if you look like you've got something on your mind, concerned about your new assignment, if it makes you feel any better, I've heard very good things about the about Reliance Captain Clark Terrell. Although I've never met the man myself, we get it, you know, because there's yeah, but great no, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just well, I guess it, I was expecting uh, you know, to stay on Enterprise in our new in a new assignment. Speaking of which, in our next assignment, Captain, uh, I expect Starfleet to want to refit the ship, which will mean <laughs> ex, um, extended shortly for us, except me. And what about after that? Well, so anyway, basically what's going on here is um, Kirk says Nagura has been retiring. This is where they met your Abomaro, who we made in Star Trek Three, by the way. Mm -hmm. Um... He said he's got to talk to the admiral about some stuff. Uh, admiral calls him to calls him to uh, talk to him. Mm -hmm. Kirk has a gets you know gets called to speak with his uh, with the admiral. I love this and, speak of the devil. That's yeah. a great line because, of course, if you know anything about Star Trek, you know that Leonard Nimoy's character was almost rejected because um, they were very afraid of how people were going to react because they, they said that um, Vulcans, Vulcanians looked like devils. And of course he had um, red skin at the outset um, that, that they tested and it looked terrible under the lights. So they took all that off, but it's just funny to, for the speak of the devil, that's more inside Star Trek jokes. So I, I like that. That made me laugh. A great likeness of uh, Nimoy here. Mm -hmm. With very great, soft yep, and loving eyes. So far, yeah. yeah. Very good. Yes. And so this guy actually really does look like the actor that played, but uh, mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of looks like the guy the actor that played. Uh, yeah. It's a very Elise. nice likeness. The name eludes me at the moment. He, he's the guy that made the inaccurate statement, Jim, the Enterprise is 20 years old. Which we all yelled out 40 at the time, and he was 40. Anyway, <laughs> look, Harry, I went through all this with, before with Nagura. I have no desire to go. Basically, Turk, he, Kirk tells him in no uncertain terms, he doesn't want to become an admiral again. He wants to stay on the ship mm -hmm. and uh, threatens to quit Starfleet if they promote him. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, Spock is having a communication with Savick, who was, I guess, at the Academy or what have you. Savicum is Savicum is having a uh, at the academy, I guess. So she's much younger, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, yeah. Captain, and so Kirk and uh, Spock get together and have a conversation about. Uh, he was thanking Spock for him coming back when he needed him and stuff, and all, which is pretty cool. A lot of good friendship stuff here. Mm -hmm. Kind of fun to you know, kind of fun to see, and uh, it's a good page right here, especially the ship. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's Star Trek, and it wouldn't be Star Trek without a distress call. It's right. Something yeah. to do, you know what I mean? So, yeah. and we have received a distress call, so a distress signal from the USS Yorktown in the LICO system. Enterprise is the closest starship to the set to that sector. So, well, of course you are. So we have altered course and increased speed to get there as quickly as possible. The Yorktown, she converted into a training vessel and assigned to Starfleet Academy. Yes, one of our sister Constitution class starships, although she did not undergo the extensive refitting that we did. She is currently on a cadet training cruise. Those cadets are undoubtedly seeing more action than they bargained for. We are now entering the Lyco system. So anyway, basically they go and find that, you know, it's detecting phaser fire. Mm -hmm. And when they come across the ship, this is what they see in this big two-page spread. Wowzer. It's neat. It looks so very, cool in real life. It's very nice. And of course, a, the Enterprise is always the closest starship to any distress Always. Oh, well, you so. can see the <laughs> seam in the digital version. Cool. Yeah, they, they spread it out. Yeah, right. they just, So they these had, are scanned. Oh yeah, they always go visual versions scanned, and they had this. They this in this case is an actual comic, but scanned. Yeah. So yeah, they had they had to, they had to stretch that sucker out. Nice. It doesn't do any, the comic any favors, but no, because the comic would be 
that's breaking the spine and that um, would require shin kicks. You could probably do it without breaking the spine, but you got to be careful. They did a decent job on it at least. But it's not like a super expensive comic. So mm -mm. Yeah. I think I paid five dollars for mine. Let me check. Yeah, yeah mine was five bucks. So the design and the technology of this alien vessel do not correlate with any known species in the galaxy. Smaller vessels, uh, possibly shuttles, or entering the larger vessel through its underbelly. I suspect this larger vessel is a mothership of sort. And Say it's obvious at down. this point that it's Area 51. And I just absolutely love this because everybody knows I'm tickled pink by the whole um, 1940s, 50s, and 60s um, aliens. So I just love this idea that that there would be a mothership <laughs> and that there would be all of these cool flying saucers coming in and out. Super cool. Anyway. Yes, yes. And uh, basically the status of the Yorktown is uh, she has crippled Captain Shields communications and and most of her other systems are down. Life support is failing. I'm detecting 57 life forms aboard. Wow. Out of, out of a crew of 428. My God. Captain. Captain, I've been trying to communicate with the alien vessel hailing it with lingo code friendship messages on all frequencies. There's no response. They're not responding either. They do not understand or are being ignored. So there's no way of knowing who they are, where they're from. But since it seems that we're beneath their notice, Spock. We transport her into the Yorktown, the affirmative captain. And so anyway, they got a landing party together. Responsibilities do whatever they can for the Yorktown's crew. There's that old style country. That. Yes, mm -hmm. that's a shame. It's a beautiful panel, but it's a horrible yeah. panel, yeah. Yeah, Captain's Log supplemental hike. I have oh, perfect that's a penalty. I have led a landing party over to the Yorktown where we are now beaming her survivors of blah, blah, blah. So, wow, that's horrible. <laughs> Putin's cat. Um, the star date has no meaning. And Gene Roddenberry already confirmed that. So asking about the star date, it's completely inconsequential. Star yeah. dates were, were totally made up. Um, and that is right out of the mouth of a Gene Roddenberry. Also, uh, tread carefully with the thing that you said at 11 minutes past the hour, because um, if you go to that uh, topic and you explore that topic, you're going to be on the very, very wrong side of me. Uh, I didn't see it. I didn't see anything said that was, uh, let's see. It's okay. Anyway. Okay. As long as it doesn't go any further than that. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, star dates are. But I like them. They sound good. They do. They just they sound good. Somebody knows what they mean in a in a. Well, nobody does, but in the I like to think that they do on the ship. So yeah, not actually a great. I mean, well, actually, this is a pretty good panel here, but you know. Kirk uh, and crew land to this uh, cadet who's taken over. Wow, a lot of people have been destroyed. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically this guy, Kirk, is his idol, which would make sense, right? Mm -hmm. Of course he is. And he said, he said he basically did what he thought Kirk would do, but Kirk basically tells him, you knew you were outclassed, you didn't stand a chance against that vessel, and yet uh, you pressed the battle, but you, your ship and the remainder of the crew in further jeopardy to figure you don't you of all people to understand, Captain, I studied your entire career, mm -hmm. all of your missions from your first tour of duty to the Enterprise. I wanted to be, uh, I just, I wanted to be just like you. You're the master of pulling victory out of the jaws of defeat. How could I be wrong for trying to do the same thing? So this is a, this is a, a well-worn path in Star Trek because, of course, we're talking about um, cadets who are on a mission uh, with a regular crew. They're shadowing the regular crew. Um, the entire regular crew is killed, and then the cadets take over. So we we we've done this before in Star Trek. It's not an entirely um like new idea. It's not a fresh idea. Let's see. So yes. the other thing too, I mean, it's uh, it's almost he's like he's channeling uh, General Patton here uh, in a way. I'm, I'm I'm seeing a lot of General Patton in these lines in terms of being. But General Patton said never regroup. So 
I don't know. It's kind of a contradiction here, you know, because the senior officers started the fight, right? The senior officers decided to fire. It wasn't these cadets that did. Mm -hmm. Then the senior officers were killed. So the cadet decided, well, I'm, you know, of course, I don't know if he would really say all this stuff that he was, you know, you would really say that you uh, were uh, trying to do exactly what Kirk would have done, but you know, you were trying to carry on the, the last orders. So mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd really fault these cadets that much. I mean, a, a coward would have run, but at least they were trying to protect, protect these aliens. So mm -hmm. I kind of don't like that, that, uh, that li line about regrouping uh, from Kirk there. It just, mm -hmm. I don't, and I don't think he would chew out a cadet at this point either, right in the heat of battle. when In front you know, of everyone, in front of everyone and lives are on the line and, and the, you know, the life support is failing. There's this mothership out there that could open fire on them at any point. Um, because the Enterprise has, um, you know, they only show the, uh, you know, the small transporter room, but they also have uh, large transporter rooms with, mm -hmm. I believe, if I'm referencing my schematics correctly, about 75, you know, pads. They have emergency uh, transport pads just for this scenario where they've got to transport a lot of people at once and they're located you know, around the, around the ship. So you never see that on, on shows, but if you look at the schematics, they have these big uh, yes. transport bays. Yeah. So really what they would have done is just transport everyone over that. That ship is just a training ship. You don't need to save yeah. that constitution class. Although um, it was very pretty and I want to save it. Yeah. But you would just leave it there <laughs> and then get, get the hell out of Dodge and then maybe yeah. go back and get it after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That they never mentioned that you know it's of course I don't think these writers have read the technical manuals no uh, which is okay but uh, I'm always laughing when they uh, like it's going to take us too long to beam everyone out I'm like yeah but you realize how many transporter pads you actually do have on the ship mm -hmm. so but that's just a fun you know fun geeky nerdy aside if you if no you I think like that's wonderful thank you for adding that uh, it's kind of funny because at this point I was like. I was thinking to myself that I also found it a little too interpersonal and a little bit out of place that he would, you know, admonish him in front of everyone. That's number one. And number two, at this point, I realized, uh, even though I'm entirely new to comics and I, I'm a total comics normie, um, that this was a completely different storytelling style than the previous four episodes or issues. Um, I noticed that this story had a great deal more dialogue and that um the the whole arc like the the whole way that the the story was taking place it this was a lot longer than the other comics like a lot longer and and way more involved and so they mm -hmm. they have these little strands um in this comic that weren't in the four previous right the first one being wonderful and and showing high fidelity and and is very yeah. well wrought but in this one i was like holy cow, this is going to be a long story. And you can feel them stretching it out at this point. Yeah, yeah. And again, I can do without him dressing down the kid. He's got enough problems. Too much going on him. Yeah, that didn't work for me either, personally. Um, the kid, you know, trying to hold it together. He was just a kid. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't the one that started the fight. I mean, uh, his, his superiors apparently did. His captain did. Yeah. And if Kirk, this one thing maybe if Kirk's dressing down a, a, a captain, but yeah. anyway. So uh, here you go. They uh, basically get all the, the 50 some odd people who were left, most of them being back over to the Enterprise. And then mm -hmm. uh, Chekhov, you know, slams the dude too. Yeah. Get everybody back to the ship. Yeah. Uh, And then they beam, uh, they beam uh, themselves over to the alien ship. They're trying to beam themselves back over to the alien ship via the Enterprise, mm -hmm. but uh, I guess the the aliens took them, took them or whatever. Mm -hmm. Meaning uh, Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. Mm -hmm. And the ship is a Tin and Man. It's, yeah, it's a basic an organic. organic form of life or uh, an organic ship if you will and i thought that may i please ask if you thought that that the that drawing was up to snuff because i really thought that was cool this here well, yeah yes. when i opened it up i was like wow that's really yes. intricate and 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 super cool because they're they're taking tin man to another level this isn't just um 
something that looks like, um, you know, a gutted fish. This is, it looks computerized and organic, you know? And so, yeah, anyway, I, I just thought yes. that it was cool. And I think that the purple is gorgeous, especially in real life. Like in on, on right. the page, the, the color is spectacular. Very nicely colored. This is a pretty cool scene. Very nice page. And then yeah, it's kind of, you know, next pa panel is kind of so-so. Some of the artists Rogo! kind of... Rogo from my old hometown. Yeah, Rogo. Rogo. I mean, Rogo, not Rogo. Rogo from my old hometown, buddy. Good to see you. Um, let's see. So they get beamed somewhere. Mm -hmm. and they're surrounded by these alien thingies. And uh, they take Spock. It's funny how they kind of look. They said they seem familiar somehow. Yeah. Which they do. Yeah, and you know what? I don't. What? I don't remember. I have this comic. I can't remember I, I, until reading it again today. Yeah. I couldn't remember this at all. Oh, so really? I bought it when it came out. So, yes, yeah, 1998. That's a long time ago. Uh, yeah, I guess with my garbagey memory. But so I'd forgotten. So I'm reading it. Well, and that's the, one of the fun things. Like, this is brand new to me now. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. Because I didn't really remember. I know I have it. I know I bought it. I just don't know why it's not. Clicking. But anyway, and like, obviously. have you read every comic ever made? I'm, I mean, I no. think that would also be an attributing no. factor, not just your age, you know, uh, it would be also be the, the sheer volume no. of material you've consumed. But I dare comics, I can tell you that I do know that I've read that when I read them again, it almost feels new because it's been 30 mm -hmm. years and 20 yeah. years and 40 years. And ugh. whereas, unless I read them over and over again, that's a different story. But if I haven't read it in forever, you know, yeah. So, and then once in a while, I'll pick up one I haven't read forever, and it'll come back to me like that. It's just nuts. So anyway, um, they are uh, being held by these freaking Area 51ers. Yeah. And aliens. Mm -hmm. And uh, Spock is brought before them because, you know, his, his telepathic uh, capabilities, and they're able to, to uh, communicate with him. Mm -hmm. And I like that it's in blue. I like that the telepathy yeah. is in blue. I think it's cool. They've many for many years. Um, if a be if person not just telepathy, but if they're like, if an alien or something is speaking and they have a very different type of a speech pattern, pattern yeah. things like that, color and shape of the word balloons and stuff is often used to denote a different type of a, a different type of voice. Or yeah. sound, so that's a commonly used. Uh, uh, so should I, should I make you yeah. read it to us in Bem voice? Yeah, <laughs> should I read it in Bem's voice? I, I'm trying to remember Bem's voice. I keep forgetting Bem's voice. Concern, <laughs> concern yourself not with them. <laughs> Only revealing to us that which we that which we wish to know. He is attempting to probe my mind. <laughs> Very well. Perhaps, perhaps through such mental contact, I will learn as much about them as they wish to learn about me. Oh. Did you know that um, Klingons don't allow themselves to be probed? Probed? No, they don't. <laughs> Let's see. So uh, I thought this is interesting. They're in. Um, I don't have it anymore. <laughs> they they're in uh, Kirk's mind and um, messing around with him and. He sees people from here that he that he lost. Edith Keeler, Gary Mitchell. But look brother, at how they have brother Sam. the telepathic um aura around them. So the yes. same dialogue, the, the the dialogue that that beautiful um blue color, that light sky blue color, um, is then the aura of everyone he meets. In, in this mind place that they trap them. It's almost like the empath. He's trapped in a mind place, right? But yeah. the halos were very interesting because it signals the reader that this is a telepathic interference. Now in the physical form, not just, you know, my thoughts to your thoughts. Now it's a hallucination. So I thought that that was um, clever. And I also thought that it looked um, pretty. Yes. Yes. Jim. They keep tying into Wrath of Khan here, which is pretty well done, but sometimes overhanded. But yeah, right, Mark? Yeah. 
Always known I die alone. They got they're they're tying into Star Trek yeah. Five with that one. Yeah. Yep. They referenced that a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Hello, Jim. So you finally caught up with me, James. Been a while, Jimmy. Uh Edith. Gary Mitchell. Sam. Yes, Jim. One of the one of the women you love. <laughs> one of the women you love. One of the friends you left behind. And your brother from a family you lost. Edith, yes, I loved you dearly. And you're gone now, part of my past. I, I've lost so much over the years. All your life, Jimmy, you've only lived for the present, never setting down roots, never thinking about the future. Your uh, life truly means. And what will you leave behind after you're gone? Never considering what your legacy will be. Yes, you're right. Sam, I have, anyway, this is some introspective stuff. You should all read it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, pretty good stuff inside of Kirk's head there. Mm-hmm. Spock, Jim, you left me on Genesis. <laughs> Did you do that? <laughs> Sorry. No, that was perfect. I love it. Jim, climb the steps, Jim. Climb yeah. the steps of Mount Soleil. Yep. Jim, Mount Soleil is a Vulcan. We're home on Earth. <laughs> Remember. Uh, Jim, Spock, Spock, I hear you. I hear you. Then not a long, long blog. God damn it. God damn it, Mark. He didn't say it really. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm not going to die because I'm not alone. I'm not alone, damn it. I'm not going to die, Not at least not yet. So he's on the uh, exam, and he's about to get probed like a thing out now. He said, Kirk is not allowed himself to be probed. I, like he's, I love the fact that, again, this is the Aliens that you always hear about, and Kirk just what does he do? Whap starts kicking her ass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, good uh, good <laughs> evening, RRTNZ. Thank you so much for the gift R- of R- and the time scales. Good oh evening, my kind sir. God. Time scales, hello there. R, thank you so much. You're, you were too kind. I appreciate that, sir. He says, Loved uh, love this issue when Kirk leapt from the Galactica screaming, I can do this all day. Oh, <laughs> <Captain> <laughs> <Rick>. <laughs> and I and I kicked out Voldemort's teeth. And oh, he kicked out Voldemort's teeth, uh, thus defeating the Mandalorians and saving Rohan. I cried tears of joy. Well, thank you for that very kind super chat. <laughs> I appreciate you, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, you know, I really like the fact that it's one of um, one of the original series um, uh, uh, maneuvers that that Kirk uses. I love that kick, the whump yeah. kick. The whump kick, that's classic Kirk right there. We're expecting that. Whump. Usually his heels are together when he does the whump kick, though. Um, and, uh, yeah, v- highly enjoyable. Yeah, these guys can't, these aliens can't fight. Kirk, on the other hand, can blast these suckers. Well, it's mm-hmm. well, I need you conscious to leave me out of here and tell me to my friends. I understand. I, I can't. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> it's pretty close. Bim always talked like this, didn't he? I am. Yes. I need to watch that episode again. Bim. You didn't like that episode, <laughs> did you? Bim. Oh, uh, gosh. Yeah, what here I also mean? found the phaser to be, um, like, out of scale in two of the panels. Like, like mm-hmm. it's making Kirk look like a, like a wee little yes. man. Yes. Yes, it does. Like, why, yeah. like what's going on? Is that okay, a phaser man. or are you just happy to see me? Why is it Probably so big? Okay. Composition. I'll show you mine. I'll, I'll show you mine in a minute. <laughs> not uh, the competent. Yes, yeah, composition isn't the best there. I know, Mr. Okay. Mr. Screwloose. I'm getting a voice message from Captain Kirk. Let's see, Captain, are you all right? Oh my! <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, just as we suspected, the mother. Oh, I'm, I almost said mother F ship. Sorry, ship has left. <laughs> Come on, me. It can't help it. Is uh, the word mother's there? It's low hanging from the say, uh, still in one piece. Uh, we're aboard the alien ship, and these aliens are wacky doodle. Mm-hmm. I'm okay, Jim. They didn't do anything to me like it did you. <laughs> Just kidding. You didn't say that. <laughs> That's good, Bones. Believe me, you wouldn't enjoy the examination. Wow, did they probe you? No. <laughs> mm-hmm. They haven't fired on us, Captain. They don't seem uh, to care uh, that we're following them. As long as we stay out of their way, 
Maintain pursuit then, Sulu, but do not fire on this vessel. It would seem only seem the only attack when provoked. Aye, sir, but there's something else you should know. The mothership is on a direct course for the Romulan neutral zone. Ba ba ba. Understood. Kirk out. Come on, little fella, before I probe your face with this phaser. <laughs> Nah, take us. I like what he, I like. You said, "Excuse the cliche, but take me. Take us to your leader." Yeah, Captain Spock. What the crying out loud? Looks like you're you're holding court. We got locked up here. He gets treated like an honored guest because mm -hmm. his ears are better than yours. Ah, uh, wonderful! This is the second time they've taken my phaser. At least they're not imprisoning us again. Blah 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 blah. You were quite correct, Captain. And having shared a telepathic link with these beings, I have come to the un to understand them, and am willing and quite willing and able to speak on their behalf. This I gotta hear, gentlemen. These beings, I will refer to them as the abductors, since their formal name for themselves is untranslatable and extremely long-lived. They have been space travelers since before the first humans walked on Earth and have visited many worlds throughout the galaxy, including Earth, where they spent several centuries extensively probing, just getting studying the human, uh, the, the planet and its uh, people bubbles. Wait a minute. Klingons do not allow themselves to be probed. I knew you were looking for that. I knew it. <laughs> uh, I, know what, I know why they seem so familiar. But they're responsible for um, those uh, probings, I mean, uh, those so-called UFO sightings and alien abductions reported on uh, Earth throughout the 20th century. I've read about how all the abductees uh, give, uh, gave a common description of what looked, uh, their captors looked like, and these creatures exactly match the descriptions. Good night, Zathras. Crap, crap. Good, Zath. So anyway... Let's see, where were we? They were, well, why were they abducting the Lycosians? For the same reason that they have visited and studied various planets uh, and peoples throughout the galaxy over millions of years to confirm whether or not these worlds were seeded by their contemporaries, the ancient race known as the Preservers. Mm -hmm. Preservers, you once told me about them, Spock. A long, a long lost race believed to tra uh, have traveled the galaxy rescuing life forms in danger of extinction and placing them on worlds where they could have they could thrive mm -hmm. quite right doctor but these abductors oppose the work of the preservers believing their seeding planets with life forms from other worlds robbed the these planets of their individuality as first explained in the tos episode the paradise syndrome mm -hmm and wreaked havoc upon their natural environment and evolutionary cycles. It is the belief of the abductors that countless life forms were, uh, were uh, suppressed and unable to come into being on worlds that would have rightfully been theirs because of the very presence of the preserver's seeds. Thus, these abductors have been slowly working their way across the galaxy trying to determine how much Damage was done to worlds seeded by the preservers and undo the damage. Well, wow, there's some Budinskis, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Both of them, okay. them and the preservers, should mind their own damn business, right? Mm -hmm. But the preservers weren't right. To, I don't know, they all thought they were right, messing with other planets. That's uh, pretty interesting stuff. Undo how? By removing the seeds, uh, life forms from the planets to give each of these tainted worlds a chance to develop naturally. And what do they do with the seeded life forms, Buck? They store them in the bowels of the vessel in uh, suspended animation to eventually be returned to their rightful homes. What? Mm -hmm. They took them, from, took them from their rightful homes. Whether they revolved on those worlds naturally or not, those planets are where they lived, grew, built the civilizations and their cultures over thousands of years. What gives you the right to disrupt their lives like that? Spock, where, well, well, so where have they done this? Until now, the far side of the galaxy on worlds uh, we will not even discover for several more centuries. 
Do you have any idea why they're headed for the Romulan Empire? Yes, Captain. As a result of their mind league with me, they believe they have now discovered perhaps the greatest example of the preserver's folly. A race of people wrongfully split in two, forced to develop and evolve and grow separate from each other, the Vulcans and the Romulans. <laughs> you don't like that, do you? <laughs> Uh, I, I like it up until that point because it's like if you really stop to to digest what the author is saying here first of all this is a, a much more complex story than we're used to seeing from this series yes. of comic books but it it um, provokes a really cool science fiction question and that is that um, the Federation is made up of hundreds of species and worlds and of course, we are reaching out, and when we find M-class planets, um, all of those species come together to to create colonies on those planets. And so, um, we're doing the same thing the preservers were doing. Only the preservers were kind of running an experiment of frail species that might not have the the chance to evolve on on other worlds and so they were put on a planet that would um, be more conducive to the needs of their evolution and so that's that that really um stands as um a challenge to the federation and everything the federation stands for which is to seek out new life and and new civilizations uh to boldly go where no man has gone before and to draw all of these nations together into the united federation of planets and and um to explore and exchange and connect and 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 you know discover it's just it's really in, uh, scientifically inspiring and then along come these aliens and they're saying no 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 we want everybody back in their silos um and so basically what the progenitors uh were doing is characterized in this comic as the same thing that starfleet is essentially doing which is you know mixing all of these races and reaching out and and mixing all of these species and and creating this happy little thing and so these guys are coming along and saying well no back into your silos away you go oh my god mary what have you done oh my god mary that's... oh my god mary what have you done sweetheart oh my goodness mary you shouldn't have not you shouldn't have i don't i'm oh speechless my god. that's that's unbelievable I, I don't know what to say i'm i'm absolutely at a loss mary um the ginger menace that's that is just so kind i don't know what to say I thank you for that incredible super chat. I mean, I just uh, wow, wow. I, I don't. I, I'm gonna read it though. I promise. I mean, I just. I, I don't know what to say. I've never had anything close like that. I've super done anything like that that I know of. It's incredibly generous. She thank says, you very much. Yep. Thank you. Absolutely. She says, "I love this channel. Everyone is so kind." Yes, Raquel. I'm a nerd. Books are my <laughs> thing. I've been reading Berserk with my son. Uh, right. There are 13 deluxe editions from Kentaro. That berserk. Okay, not the run. Okay, not the uh so Kentaro, you know, that up. My era. Yeah, I thought it was that one at first, but you, you mentioned the Garney one. They are mangas. It's one of the oldest mangas. Um, I've been reading with my son. Oh, I'm also reading great. Raquel's new book on my own. Yay! Oh my god. I love you. Thank you. That is I'm, the biggest compliment that you could pay me because you are an avid reader and and I'm so excited and just a thank you so much for your generosity of spirit not just this gift but yes, just, just who you much. are as a person I love you so much Mary thank you for for joining us here at clobber and times and for just being an incredible friend to one and all you have been giving to this community and volunteering for this community for like a decade and um, I just think that you are one rock star of a lady. And I'm so happy to know you. Thank you so much. Um, I, I can't even, I'm speechless. Uh, Mary, thank you so much. You were too kind. That is, I mean, thank. I, I'm, wow. I just don't know what to say, but uh, thank you so much. And guess when you mentioned Berserk, my first go-to was the manga one, which I mean, just not too long ago that the creator of that, and it was, it was one of the longest running mangas if not the longest of ever, that was who I thought of when Mark said, Garney, I just, okay, must be that one. That is popular, the one by Keanu Reeves, but apparently it's that one. 
the uh, the manga one. So there you go. Wow. And well, again, that's a that's a very popular one, uh, Mary, and uh, it's been around for a long time. So, and we love you right back. Yeah. So, that's an amazing thank gift. So thank you. Yeah. It really really helps to keep gift. the lights on. Yes. Yes. I mean, I'm just I'm touched. I'm definitely not worthy. But now you got to pay really play an hour's worth of clips now too for that one. Yes, yeah, so let's do some. <laughs> yeah, we play some clips for Mary. I don't know what she likes, so we'll just do some random ones. I'm not sure. Um, she likes Star Trek: The Original Series. Does she? Yep, she well, does. Do have she's a under. she's a big fan of Star Trek. Um, she is like she knows about a lot of. Uh, she comes to a lot of things through books. She loves Isaac Asimov. She she's uh she's a an extremely cool chick. Again, oh. you proceed from a false assumption. I am a Vulcan. I have no ego to bruise. I'm a doctor, not a bricklayer. You're a healer. There's a patient. Landing a starship is your first best destiny. Get back your, get back your command. Hello, computer. Never get your old. agonizer, please. No, Mr. Sp what? What on earth is that? I am endeavoring, ma'am, to construct a mnemonic memory circuit using stone knives and bearskins. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. <laughs> you cooperate with us, and uh, maybe we'll cut you in for a piece of the action. You agree. <laughs> You green blooded and human. Bridge to Admiral Kirk. Jim, you proceed from a false assumption. I am a Vulcan. I have no ego to bruise. <laughs> I'm a doctor, not a bricklayer. <laughs> Gentlemen, be me aboard. Oh my goodness. There we go. Um Mary likes um when Kirk gets his shirt ripped off. So we gotta we gotta get a couple of those for mm. her. And uh for Mary and I, I'm going to speak for Mary here so that Mary and I can make a formal request to you, Clobby. Um, we would also like the mint julep scene so um we can ah, talk about that. how marvelous it would be to have a mint julep with Jackson that's that's um this side of paradise, Jim boy. Y'all ever had a real cold me. Georgia style mint julep, huh? Yeah. Give me about three minutes. <laughs> you know, I see, you know the episode exactly. Of you know, this side of paradise. Yeah. Yes. Like your it's your crappy memory, of course. I had no no yes. chance at that one. <laughs> and then, uh, there's also a spot. He went off to create something called a mint julep. That's a drink, Jim. <laughs> I lost one of my favorite episodes there. Yeah, that's a great episode. Yeah. Yes, so sir. let's talk about how beautiful the art is on the previous page when you're looking at Leonard Nimoy's face. He looks beautiful. And in real life, um, you actually get to see that beautiful um, uh, drawing of, of Leonard Nimoy's face. But on the opposite side of the page is the panel that Clobby is about to reveal. And this oh one? my gosh, the likeness of these two side by side in the comic, it, it will actually stop you. Because if you, can you go to Where the at? previous, there, look at that. Yeah, so that's pretty that good. that image is. That's a great next, Spock image. Yeah. And that is directly next to the, the um, amazing likeness on the following page of Kirk. And so you're looking at this and you're thinking, wow, what a high quality comic. Yeah. Do you know Who's the I mean? artist on this yes. one? Um, Michael Collins is the, is the Collins, artist. Okay, yeah. yeah, he's pretty I good. Mean, he's been been mess. I mean, some of his stuff, it's like he barely oh. draws a line, and then other yeah. times he does these. Like, it's just what you guys were teaching me about. It really is what you guys were teaching me about. This is like when I was working in broadcast news. You know, people are like, "Oh, well, you know, the this and this uh, criticism and that criticism of broadcast news." But when you have a super tight deadline. That's that's what's getting out, right? And and I think that there has to be some time saving here, right? Um, and so I understand it now. 
Yes. Yes. It's again, he had the deadlines are killers. Uh, this per this person is um uh I, you know, as someone who's kind of I mean, look, I can't draw flies myself, but I do understand comic book art and panel arrangement and storytelling and cartooning and things like that just from so many years of studying it a little bit. And he's a pretty good structural cartoonist, I would say. He's a good storyteller. Mm -hmm. Or as uh, the the great uh, the Scott McCloud won a, a bunch of awards for writing a book in the early 90s called Understanding Comics. And as you know, the word comics is something of a misnomer, as Will Eisner called it. I mean, comics means funny. They start the reason why they're called comics, for those who don't know, is because they just happened to start in the funny papers. The very first comic ever made was called Famous Funnies. It was a bunch of comic strips cut up and put into a comic book format. It wasn't really new comic, it wasn't newly made for that format. So just the word comics stuck for some strange reason. Comic books stuck. Yeah. And um McLeod was playing around. They're stuck with it now. Obviously, he's mm -hmm. 80 something years. But he was playing around with some of the different definitions. You know, graphic literature was one they used to say a lot, but it's not going to stick. It doesn't matter. Graphic novels came close, but they've mm -hmm. got that wrong. So he came up one of his favorite longer explanations just for the fun of it was juxtapose pictorial images in deliberate sequence. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time he told me about that. I was like, oh my gosh. What yeah, a moment. For nerds. Nobody's gonna be saying that, but it is it is accurate. <laughs> yeah. So um words and pictures is the way I used to like to say it. It is, it's telling the story with words and pictures and panels too, though. So words, pictures, and panels in sequence. No. Uh, anyway, so this is pretty good stuff. That's a nice shot of Kirk right there. He's basically pretty pissed off, is Kirk. So where are we at? Where were we? It was saying that's where uh, we are, boss. Right here, right? Nope. Oh. We are on the next page. You were just scrolling to it. You had just announced dun 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 the Romulan Empire. And that's go down. Yeah. By removing the seated life. Yeah. Rightful homes right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can keep going. Are there, oh more. Yeah, a little bit more. Right and right here. We're right here, bus. Spock, you mean the preservers were, re were responsible for those dissident Vulcans going off thousands of uh, going off thousands of years ago to form the Romulan Empire? It is possible, Doctor, but there is no way to be sure. There is no mention of such thing a thing in our histories. However, it is true that the departure of those dissidents coincided with the time in which Rock led the Vulcan people on the path to total logic. Oh, total, oh, 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 oh logic, huh? Oljic, Oljic, have they said most picture Oljic, huh? Um, and at this, at that time, we were very much a race facing extinction. It seems logical that the preservers could have become involved. But what matters most now is that the abductors firmly believe it. And to me, the case uh, that uh, even to be the case, and they're acting upon it. Mm -hmm. The idea, the chaos that'll erupt if the, this ship enters Romulan space. If this, if, this uh, if these creatures attempt to abduct us um, and study the Romulans, oh, if, the, if they, or worse, yet attempt to reunite the Romulans with their Vulcan brethren, I believe I do. Yeah, that one ship wouldn't have a chance. Mm -mm. Not with that many Vulcan, many Romulans. Mm -hmm. Or that many federations for that matter. So they don't know what they're doing. And once the Romulans determine that this ship came from Federation space, they'll jump to the conclusion that the Federation has staged an attack on them. They'll declare war, violence, death, and destruction spreading across the galaxy like wildfire with the Klingons joining and just for the sheer thrill of it, says Kurt. I wish you could just like get rid of the whole background there and just have that... Um, image that Rathacon era image of James Kirk. T. Kirk and oh, put yeah. that on a t shirt. That would be such a cool t shirt. There you go. Pretty right, cool. Mark. Yeah. Mark. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. No, I'm clipping as we're He's talking. clipping so. stuff. I know, but it's just <laughs> Mark and I have all the same taste in t shirts and, and posters. No, Mark, that is great. Yeah. you remember seeing that image of Kirk? I know you're busy, but it's a gooder. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think the art is great on this, and uh, mm -hmm, yeah, it does. It does. You know, that's the thing. You haven't read that many comics, but yeah, uh, this is one of the ones where you could say I could see this being an 
episode of a Star Trek series, you yeah. know, a phase two. And that's, I think that's the whole point of this, uh, you know, series. And I, and it looked like from remembering that they did pick like one mission each year, it seemed like. So now we're on the fifth, uh, mm -hmm. fifth, you know, fifth mission. But yeah, really, you know, I'm not getting ahead with my rating, but uh, I re did really like this comic. A couple of things mm -hmm. aren't good, but and it's a very Star Trek concept, although, hey, it's funny little green men and the covers obviously close encounters of the third kind, but uh, mm -hmm. it's 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 well done. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, the cadets in there making some shite on the bridge and Sulu saying, oh, my, I didn't say that. <laughs> saying, get out of here, punk. You bother me. Get out of here, boy. You bother me. And so, uh, listen to me. You have to turn this ship around and avoid entering Romulan space. They're ignoring us, Jim. We're just specks to them. Uh, not much more than annoying little gnats, except for Spock, which makes me really wonder about these guys. <laughs> uh, their conflict with the preservers, this path they've been on. It dates back to before humans even existed. We can't expect to, cha uh, to change their outlook in one day. We mm -hmm. have to, Bones. The entire galaxy is at stake. They have to. They have to understand that if uh, they stay on this course, they'll become more of a menace than they ever thought the preservers were. Mm -hmm. And where are the damn preservers? I'm, I'm just glad they didn't take my communicator along with the phaser. Kirk to Enterprise. Sulu here. Oh my. Sorry. Come on. The communicator is way too big. It is big. What the hell, like, dude? Everything, like the phasers and the communicators are way too big. It's like they all took Viagra. <laughs> they're shrinking, I guess. They're they're oh, they're, 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 they're too missent. Anyway, tell Sulu, uh, listen we're very carefully. Missing. I want you to increase speed until the Enterprise pulls in ahead of us. Then I want you to pull in front of us and get destroyed by the ship ramming crap out of you. Hi, Captain. Oh, my. Anyway, so he does it. Why that would bother this ship, I don't know, but directly in their path, he says, if you don't, you're going to have to go right. There would be no problem for that ship, Jim. I'm just saying. You'll have to destroy a lone defenseless ship that isn't mm -hmm. taking any aggressive... You mean like the other ship they wiped out, pretty much? Mm-hmm. Oh, that isn't a taking any aggressive action against you. So these aliens... Yeah, but they still destroy, kill a lot of people. Mm-hmm. That's kind of sticks in my craw about this whole story, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's the it's the, the downside of the story. Yes. You claim to be acting for all the life forms who were who were denied the chance to exist. But if you continue in this course, you'll be responsible for billions of lost lives, lost civilizations, unimaginable death and destruction. Unlike the preservers who sought to preserve life to ensure the future of the galaxy. You would willingly sacrifice their lives. I'm get, I gotta work on my BIM. I have to watch BIM again to get an idea. How I BIM love talks. BIM, and I, I love your BIM impression. I thought you hated BIM. Right? I do hate BIM. BIM. That's why like I this. love making fun of him. You know what? Okay, well, I will talk like BIM for the rest of the night. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. That's what was doing, right? Well, here. How about we get some uh, bones in there? Hey, Jim boy. Y'all ever have a? Real cold Georgia style net julep, huh? <laughs> hey, that guy, that, that guy needs his entire face kissed. Like just I'm, smooches I'm, over his entire <laughs> face. Well, I'm not smooching him, but I do like him. <laughs> and Mary's looking for a calendar. Um, Mary, I can I can show you where you can get a good calendar, or I can send you the one. original I think series calendars.com calendars where you get the TOS. They release one every year. Yeah, and they still I, make them. And I buy one every year. Yeah, they get. I, I, yeah, you can get the. Uh, they probably still have it on sale, even though the two months are gone. Yeah, but but yeah probably you can get cheap. Them cheap now. Yeah. You can probably get them cheap now too. Yeah. Well, at least the stores are cheaper when you can find them. You can't really buy them. What are they? They're like thirty bucks uh, Canadian, no, I think, at calendars.com. and they have the TOS, and they only oh. put TOS on it, and they're just beautiful. I she, I've been using them for yeah. I don't know, like twenty years. She's in the states. They're like sixteen, seventeen bucks, there, and they're half off usually when you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, now I can get them cheap, probably. Um, yeah. Mark, Mark can give you the URL for that beautiful. Just wait, when, just give him a second because Mark is Scotty on this ship, and Mark is amazing at this stuff. He is what we call an enabler. She puts you to work all the time, doesn't she? 
But I, I'm, make, I'm making a mint julep right now, so you got to give me a Wait a minute. You didn't clip them? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, so anyway, I'm not paying attention to anyone in the chat. You know what? No, no. You have to, now you have Sorry. to um, quote Avon, and you have to say, what would you like me to do with my other hand? What, or arm? What would you like me to do with the other hand? Oh, yeah. We do have that clip now, actually. Yeah. You do? Well, I just, I just, oh, here, give me uh, thir uh, 30 seconds here. I'm just going to add it right here. It's that important to um, put it, uh, you put it with the Blake, Blake 7 ones, huh? I'll put it in the Blake 7, yeah. We, we yeah. don't want to go out of order here, yeah, because then. Understand the consequences it. of your actions that you would have in the entire galaxy. All the blood would be on your hands. Right on top of us, brace and boom, they were able to stop. That was close. A sudden full stop at the speed that the ship was going at incredible. Anyway, so the ship stopped. Unbelievable. I'm going to miss all this when I when I move over to the Reliant. Yeah, because you're just going to be like, you know, doing nothing on the Reliant. Let's face oh it. Well, check off will be busy there, too. But then see if you can get us some scans. Is that all? What shall I do with the other hand? I'll let you know. <laughs> okay, okay, Mary. Wait one second, sweetheart. I'm coming because I just found it for 75% off. It's only $7.99. Just hold on. Hold. Wait for two wags of a puppy's tail. I am coming. I'm coming. Hold on. Let me just pop this URL into the chat schema bobber. Okay, here mm. you go. Here you go, sweetheart. That is the exact one you're looking for. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Seven ninety nine. It's um seventy five percent off right now, Mary. Nice. I'm waiting yeah, for the certain good. calendar I want to get like a superhero one that won't go down in price. And it's like, man, when you you guys gonna keep them? Man, not the <laughs> price down these suckers. I, I was getting mine get at Christmas one. time. I'll just get the Trek one. Yeah. <laughs> I've had it before. I got a buddy of mine who has every single one of those. By the way, I have I have all of them from. Like I think maybe I don't I don't even know what number to assign. Maybe wherever they started, years? he's got them all. I I don't know. I would need to look, but it's a full stack in my in my yeah. closet, and oh, I've yeah. always received them as a present because they're they're solid TOS and nothing else. So I I love them. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, they're great, and like I said, he he, he couldn't find it this year. But I found one and got it cheap and got it to him, so he keeps his collection going. Oh, cool! Oh, cool! Yeah, I didn't have any problems getting mine. Where did I? Get They're tough. They get tougher to find. You know, Barnes and Square used to say used to sell it, and you know, sometimes they were, they don't get enough of them anymore. Calendars.com always has it. Always. If yeah. I oh, yeah. Online, but I get store. it from them because they yeah, always yeah, yeah. have the TOS calendar. Always. Calendars.com. I need to check on them. Yeah, 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 and they're and they're super cheap. If you get them in January or February, they're cheap like dirt. Are they in Canada. If you buy them in December in Canada, I think they're around twenty or thirty bucks they're, on my side they're, of the border. Yeah, but then you you don't have a calendar for a couple months. Yeah, that that <laughs> never happens. That's why I pay but the full price. They're in Canada though, or they just ship everywhere. They just ship to Canada. Known to Canada. Pardon? But they're they're everywhere, right? So yeah, good. they're I'll, everywhere. Yeah, but I'll they ship to Canada. Gotcha. Let's see here. So the story. Where, 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 where. Okay. Um. Oops. All right. Where were we? Oh, here we go. So they uh, managed to suss out the silly aliens. Captain's log. Star date seven nine one two uh, one one two hike. The abductors have agreed <laughs> to avoid entering Romulan space. Now aware. Of the dire consequences that such an action could uh, could have the, on the galaxy. Before we mm -hmm. return to the uh, to the Enterprise, these ancient and mysterious aliens have granted us a guided tour of their enormous and magnificent vessel. These murderers who killed over four hundred of our almost four hundred of our people are really nice, and we had coffee with them and stuff. Mm. It's most difficult yeah. to admit this human Kirk. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, yeah, that that rubbed me the wrong way too, because it's like, you know, they did it uh, maybe not out of, uh, you know, well, hatred, they were being fired they, on, but that's another yeah, thing. Yeah, they yeah. they still killed a lot of people, and they probably could have maybe just put the ship in a tractor beam or done something else. How about They're the almost... previous episode where where all those people were killed, all the Starfleet personnel were killed, and no one got charged? 
with yeah. their murder. Well, this one, it's these aliens are godlike. They're almost like, quote unquote, the engineers, you know, if you're talking, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, alien and aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're like they're above. They're so far above us that they don't care. But it, it it's also seems a little suspect that they would have that horrible of a code, I guess, of conduct that they would, wouldn't would care about what they did. But the story doesn't work if they don't do that either, right? You know, if they mm -hmm. were compassionate. So it, Kirk has to do his, uh, you know, logical uh, talk, which is coming up. You know, It's not a strong story. It's not. It's an interesting one. Also interesting it's ideas. interesting, though, yeah. and it's much higher like quality it. than, yeah, than like two, three, and four. But number one right. is far and away the best episode yeah. in this yeah. collection. The fidelity in episode uh, one yeah. is just, it's so good. It's so enjoyable. Anyway. So, Ben, wait, wait. So, so ben, it is most difficult to admit this human Kirk. But like of his encounter, we feel a significant degree of embarrassment. Our embarrassment, that is, bare, our asses were bare. Get it? Human humor. <laughs> Perhaps focusing for so long on nothing but undoing the work of the pres preservers has caused us to be a bunch of misplaced assholes, jerk asses. Like, <laughs> the bashing human jerk thought it might not that seem to you, you stupid ass little human. I mean, we like you and we like Vulcans better than you, though. Vulcans are better than you. I mean, but you're okay. You're <laughs> You embarrassed all of us. I hate you. <laughs> well, and your people have so much to offer the galaxy if you stop murdering people and taking people off of planets and shit. Yeah. Uh, you've seen and experienced so much over millions of years. There's a lot of that can be learned from you. And no, stop probing people for Christ's sake. <laughs> Why not a bad Fox and Mulder when you need them? <laughs> right there. Right there. Well, this Probably. also Fox reminds Ball, me really. of the um, Area 51 alien from Stargate, which was out at this time, no? What year? Uh, this is 1998. Yeah. Wasn't that? Wasn't there an episode of, uh, of Stargate that also paid homage to the Area 51 um, alien storyline? So. I think so. Oh, it's so time. enjoyable. I forget what that character's name is, but I've only watched Stargate SG-1 twice. Oh, uh, no. Did you watch it all the way through, or you mean just two episodes? Pardon? Did you watch, you mean you watched it, you've watched the whole the whole thing, or just? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I've watched the whole thing, but I, I don't thing. actually know how many times. I hate saying how many times I watched it, because I'm I'm genuinely, I, I genuinely don't know. But I've watched it straight through at least a couple of times. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, my God, Professor R2, I love you. Yes, He's they were it. in Stargate. The main gray's name was uh, Thor. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The gray race was oh. Asgardian. I love you, Professor R2. There you go, Prof. Well done, sir. Bro. So, it is time to leave our machine behind. That is true, but must decline your love for human talk because we don't like to try to probe humans. There's still other men and people in the probe out there, like mummulants. So now at least we shall go home. And as uh, finally remembered Bim's voice. And as long since uh, time <laughs> since we lost there, uh, on our way back, we will replant them. It is not easy for our race as old as ours to be proven wrong by a bunch of upstart shithead humans. Especially when a historic, uh, when the historic as violent and blah, 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 you bunch of jerks. I can't even talk anymore in the stupid voice. Get off our ship, you little twerps. That is humans a suck. very, very good Bem. I finally remember how dumb Bem talks. I'm sorry. Well, uh, you know, Jimmy Dewan did his best to to differentiate uh, Bem yes. from Arix, but Arx it's very difficult. Like uh, yeah. Yeah, because Rx has just a little bit of a different cadence than Bem. But I mean, it's 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 very easy to conflate uh, Rx and I'd Bem. I've forgotten that though, but yeah, it's Rx talked just like Bem talked. Yes. Talk the same thing from Jimmy well, Johan. Yeah. All right, anyway. Yep, yep. Sorry, yep, yep. everybody. I couldn't resist. No, we love so here it. Here we go. We're closing up with the uh, the pro the probites, the probe aliens, and um. 
everything's hunky dory. The Enterprise is back home on its way back home. Got the hog star date, much like the abductors. We too have begun to voyage home. He said voyage home again twice now. In our sick bay, the, uh, the survivors of the Yorktown, all 28 of them, are recovering nicely from the trauma of losing all the rest of their friends. The Yorktown herself, however, has been retrieved by Starfleet and is scheduled to be decommissioned. That's what you think. It's going to be the Enterprise one day. Mm -hmm. On a more personal note, I have had another conversation with Admiral Morrow, which has led to me. So anyway, Kirk tells he's, he tells McCoy and Spock that he's accepting the promotion to Admiral. I don't like that, this part. I find it upsetting. Uh, uh, Fee, he, uh, we're talking TAS, Bem. Um, yeah, uh, Clubby? The animated I series is an episode called Bem, written by David Gerald. Yeah. yeah. Um, Clobby, I, I, and Mark, I don't know how you guys mm -hmm. felt about this, but I didn't like this whole "I'm gonna go become a teacher" thing. I mean, listen, I understand. But he did, he I did do it, but yeah. I, I love Kirk, and we all know that that when you describe Kirk, Kirk is a super nerd. So they they said that he was a walking stack of books when he was um at stack the academy. So he is an extremely learned man, but it's just after, yeah, I don't know. I just think to myself, him being the captain of a starship is his destiny. Well, I don't want him to be a teacher. But he did it in the moment. Well, he was that in Rap the Con, pretty much. I know, yeah. but I'm just saying, like, mm. but this, well, this is, is a, this is pretty interesting. What led him? This is this this writer extrapolating what might have led him to that. It the, is cool, the young kinda. cadet, the young cadet, just made him gave him pause that everyone is reading of his exploits and thinking he's just okay. Well, here he'll, he'll, here's the dialogue. He says, uh, "He's talking about." Uh, let's see, hang on a sec. Uh, uh, okay, for one thing, I'm troubled by the perception. That Starfleet needs uh, Starfleet's next generation seems to have of me. That that I'm some kind of crazy, thrill-seeking daredevil who doesn't care about the consequences of his actions. Mm -hmm. I intend to dispel these larger-than-life myths that are already cropping up about me and my travels mm -hmm. by teaching these kids directly instead of just letting them read about me, my missions. Maybe I can prevent them from getting the wrong ideas about what it takes to command a starship. And teach them that my occasionally drastic and unorthodox measures should be the exception, not the rule. Now, I actually don't mind this. I mean, I think mm -hmm. if you were a living legend, and that's the thing. I mean, you were somebody who's constantly written about all of your everything you did is on Starfleet record, almost all of it anyway. And you're gonna have a lot of hero worship, and you're alive to see it. It's one thing. Hey, Picasso, good to see you. You know. You know, Abraham Lincoln and George Washington, the people like that may not have, you know, might have experienced a lot of the things said about them while they were still alive. This is a guy who saved the, if you saved the galaxy on a number of occasions and all this other stuff, and you're going to be famous and there are going to be a lot of kids that want to be you. Yeah. And that kid gave him pause. I don't mind this idea to be honest, because we all know in Rat the Con, he was teaching the training course things. So, I don't want Kirk to be a teacher. But he was in the movie. I mean, I don't either. Can't he change was. it though. Yeah. I know. Well, why do you think I was? Why do you think I was like mur, 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 when I'm well, describing you. to you? Of course, I don't either. Yeah. I don't either. But then he does go back to being remember, captain. That's the other thing we never get to. We never get uh, the. You know, we get a couple of missions. You know, but in between. Uh, well, Spot three and told five. him it was, this was a mistake. Remember, Rathacon Spot tells him this is a mistake. Yeah. yeah. But in in uh, Star Trek, you know, after Star Trek four. Uh, you know, they're on the Enterprise again, but we just get that, you know, the mission and, uh, uh, you know, the final, uh, uh, what's of Star Trek six, but you never, you know, I guess they got back together again, right? On another mission or, or well, you know, were assigned. Yeah. yeah, but see, here's the thing about this. He still, you got to have the human qualities of Kirk in there. For example, every any human being who has the humility, because James Kirk still has some humility. He's not an ego, ego maniac at all. Mm -hmm. He's always pretty humble when it comes to his own personal life. He's pretty easy going down the earth when he's not in a crisis. He's, you know, 
and he's you know he treats everybody with with respect. He's a good guy, and quite frankly, people are all you know, he's he's now become over the past at this point ten years a living legend where the, everyone's just thinking, oh man, he's the greatest because he's the greatest captain and stuff. Mm-hmm. And that got, that gets to somebody who isn't completely full of themselves, and they're gonna go, wait a minute, that's still a guy, a human being, you know, you know, and he it kind of messes up with it. That's a human flaw he has. It messes with his head a little bit. He's like, I don't want that responsibility. I'm not a, you know, I'm, I'm not a god or anything. Mm-hmm. And I think, uh, <clears throat> you know, I think um, part of his humility is leading him to say, look, I just want to teach. And I don't want everyone to have this crazy misconception of me. I can actually understand where the writer's coming from with this. I don't think it's that bad. Hmm. <clears throat> I think it's a flaw. I mean, it's not a flaw. I think it's... Um, because who wants everyone to just think you're perfect all the time and think everything he's done makes him the, like the greatest? We know when we as fans know he's the greatest captain of them all. Mm-hmm. But in the context of this fiction, he would just want to be himself and he would want to teach these kids, hey, don't don't always do it my way. You got to be yourself as a captain. You know? Yeah, and I accept that point. But at the same time, I'm I'm kind of liking what Professor R2 is saying. You know, he was in the movie and he wasn't particularly good at it. Also, like some other stuff that Professor R2 says, he says, those who can't teach, just kidding. I hate that saying I'm a teacher, too, and I work my butt off. Yeah, um, Professor R2 and um, and you know, they, they always call us teachers, but I have such a hard time using the word teacher because I'm not a teacher. If you say teacher, people automatically think that you teach children. And so I hate using the word teacher, but at the same time, you know, um, I'm not exactly, um, comfortable, um, calling myself professor Briggs. (laughs) You know what I mean? That also feels a little bit weird. Um, uh, so yeah, I just call me Raquel. Uh, but, uh, uh, but it's just, it just feels, I don't know. I just, I, I, I feel the same nuance as professor R2. I just think that he wasn't particularly good at being, um, uh, an instructor before and, and uh, yeah, and I just I, I don't know why I just I don't like it. And Fiona's saying that it feels contrived. I don't Here's know what, what to yes, think. It yeah. is. Remember, it's proven wrong in the Wrath of Khan. Spock mm-hmm. tells him he was wrong, mm-hmm. just like he was wrong to quit before when he quit. And, and then he went back to the Enterprise. And what happens? I mean, V'ger comes along and he does it again. He comes he becomes his old self. So I'm saying that there's a reason why Kirk would quit again. He came up. I think this writer came up with a with a credible way that Kirk would would say, "I don't want to get bigger than myself. I'm going to go into. I'm going to go back and be a teacher." And once again, Spock tells him it was a mistake for you to accept promotion. Commanding a starship is your first best destiny. Anything yeah. else is a waste of material. Well, in Wrath of Khan, there had to be a reason why did Kirk quit. I think this guy came up with a credible reason for it. Yeah, that Kirk I think got so too. something yeah, think inside of him. I think that it's nice that it's included in this comic because it's obvious that we're all pretty passionate about the yeah. fate and the and the employment of our favorite captain. You know what would right. be his what would be his destiny? Yeah, because we don't know the reason because it's not really in canon. In other words, yeah, there wasn't, it's not canon, right? It's not so, stated in the movie. Yeah. So anything done in a novel in a comic is just one writer's opinion. Yeah, and this writer. Did a fill in the blank that you can either accept or not. I think I can buy into it. Kirk, Kirk is, remember, Kirk has doubted himself. Remember how Kirk always gets the job done, but there are times when, like, when someone gets killed. Yeah. In private to Bones, he's he showed that vulnerable side where he's like, am I doing the right thing? I mean, you know, he, he would look at the look on his face when uh, people get killed under his command. It's, I mean, it's brutal. So yeah. there's got to be a human side to a great guy like Kirk and a great captain like Kirk, and he's not a He's not invincible, even though he's the greatest captain there is. Yeah. Um, and you think he, that writing it in this way gives an opportunity to enhance the uh, humility and the dynamic quality of the It's characters. a human quality. So I, I, think I, it's, I, got, I yeah, gotcha. I think what this writer does is explain the fall. In other words, he fell. Because remember, Spock tells him he fell. He says, commanding a starship is your first best dance destiny. Yeah. He tells him it was a mistake for you to accept promotion. So. Yeah. This this is this writer giving us the reason why he made the mistake, because something that happened 
kind of affected him and made him think, man, you know, I, I don't want kids to, you know, get the wrong idea and think that, you know, this is what I am. Wes mm -hmm. Cagle. Good to see you. Again, Wes but you're here. Hey. I think it works, but like I said, it may not work for everybody and it doesn't matter. It's not canon anyway. Mm -hmm. But I can understand uh, this being one possible because what's an alternative one? Him just saying, I mean, why would he quit again? Yeah. I mean, no, that's that's you've got to explain I, it somehow. And, and the whole point of this, these comics is to give us the untold, you know, the untold voyages. So yeah. uh, it's just, you know, trying, it's not canon, but it, I think it does a pretty nice job of uh, summing up how Kirk feels at that point in his life. And, uh, you know, maybe I wish this would happen if he was older. I mean, uh, you know, it, it seems like maybe a younger guy who would they kick out of being a captain. But of course, the Admiralty wants him, you know, they want him in that higher position to help. Uh, train you know the next uh, the next generation which he says mm -hmm. in one of these panels and he agrees with so it's not entirely out of character i'm not reading this and saying oh i got to throw uh throw you know throw tomatoes at the screen no uh, and there's a nice you know a nice close out you know at the end that we'll get to. good night wagnar Gwag is Greg. leaving good night Gwag. hi well, Gwag. take care I don't think that that's what's happening, but I think, uh, like, I don't think anyone wants to chuck tomatoes at it. But at the same time, like, I I understand the nuanced opinion that um, Professor R two and Fiona are putting forward, where Fiona's mm. saying, you know, it feels a little assembled, and so that it, so it so it sort of feels contrived to me. And um, I definitely loved the the very subtle nuance of of yeah. Professor R two saying, you know, did we ever really buy him as a teacher? And and uh, Professor R2 responded to me and he said, yeah, it's not yeah. the same teaching in higher ed. Yeah, Professor R2, it's it's really difficult. You know, um, I don't have the $84,000 to finish my dissertation. Um, uh, wow. I have the ability to do it, but I just don't have the money. And so um, I, I think uh, I... I I don't mind when my students call me Professor Briggs, but I definitely um, avoid telling people that I'm a teacher. If I'm forced, I'll tell people, yes, I teach higher ed. I'm an instructor, but um, I don't feel totally comfortable doing that until I finish my doctorate, which is very strange because, of course, throughout all of history, uh, the master, uh, that's why it was called a master's, was the benchmark for um, teaching higher ed. Uh, it's only been in recent years that it's become the doctorate, but you'd, I just try and stay humble. I don't mind if my students call me Professor Briggs. I just don't feel like making it my Twitter handle. But yes, teaching higher ed, as you, as you obviously also know, is far different than being a teacher. <laughs> Good night, Max. Good night, Max. Good night, Max. Good night, Max. And, um, well, we got uh, uh, well, we got people talking about filth in the chat, but I still like them. But oh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> For those of you who don't know, anything after 05 this, with the name Star Trek on it is considered filth around here. Everyone, we don't tell anyone what they can and can't watch or like, but uh, just you know, STD, Straggle Dude Worms, P Hard, their lower dregs, all of it's filth. So when you talk about it in the chat, it makes me want to. Well, you, you made me want, watch you it too. Know. God, you made me watch Disgracery. You made yourself watch it. <laughs> Disgusting, you guys. Why are we talking about this crap? S you guys deviated. I, you guys moved I, me away from talking to Fiona and R2 to talk about the filth. No, I'm saying no, I'm not talking about the filth. They are. So people doing it in the chat. I'm not if I didn't like them as people, I'd be upset. I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway, but uh, they're still my friends, but I, you know, you know, I'm just telling them. All right, let's get this um, comic over with. Yes. Yeah. It's getting so late her, early. Yeah, because so Nicholas Mayer and uh, and uh, and Har Bennett are the ones that put this put it in the position in the first place where Kirk yes. was running a training cruise. And so that's that. And I guess Roddenberry didn't like Rathacon much, so maybe he wouldn't have done it. But yes. that's that. He dealt with it. Roddenberry accepted it, or maybe he didn't. Yeah. Well, at least the Enterprise wasn't a restaurant in space. No, it would been better. No, so great, Mark. So he makes Spock uh, this captain. Of the training crews enterprise and McCoy, the still the chief engineer, I mean, to be chief, excuse me, uh, medical officer, and all that good noise. And Chiku is going to go be on the Reliant, and Sulu's hanging with him for a while. And then it says, Space, the final frontier. These are the continuing voyages of the Starship Training Prize Enterprise. <laughs> 
an ongoing training mission to explore strangled new, real strange new worlds, not that filth infested <laughs> piece of trash, garbagey filth show called Strangled New Worlds, which sucks. You know, to seek out new life forms <laughs> and new civilizations. And the go. stupid tape ripped We're on my bag and my bag oh, and comics, and now I have to buy a new bag. Not, oh, I'm sorry. Damn it. Mr. Mr. Screwloose ahead, whoop that to one. I kept it. Oh my, whoop one. Never the end, it says. So, yeah. There you go. So, for me, this is, I'm going to say, a crazy long comic that I think tries to accomplish a lot. And I found it entertaining. It's, I wouldn't say it's flawless, but I found it entertaining. I think it's about a B. Like, I think I'd maybe give it like, you know, like an eight out of 10, but it is nothing like the um, first issue. The first issue from March 1998 entitled Tales from the Second Five-Year Mission yeah. is a delicious display of fidelity and is, it's just so much fun. Um, number two is definitely number two. Um, number three yeah. is a waste of Jackson D. Forrest Kelly's image. Number four is, oh, please don't. Seriously, just stop. And um, five <laughs> is about an eight out of ten. So this was an enjoyable series, and I would like to thank you for teaching me about it. I had a marvelous time with it, and I just absolutely love it, and I cannot wait to add it to um, my my growing Star Trek comic book collection, thanks to the two marvelous geeks in my life named Mark and Clubby. Well, there you go. Fiona says, uh, Clubby obviously relates to us. issue. well, I'm not married to it or anything, Fiona, but I, I actually do want to, I thought it was a decent, as decent an explanation as any as why Kirk ends up where he is at the beginning of Wrath of Khan. But it doesn't sell the conclusion for you. Got you covered. I mean, not like I didn't love the comic or anything, that's for sure. But I love you, Fiona. So that's, all, that's all that matters. Um, so I would give it a uh, well, Mark, what do you give it? I really liked it. I mean, I think uh, there's some you know, a few problems. Uh, Kirk chewing out that uh, cadet on the bridge, but I think uh, yeah. he realizes he wants to pass on his knowledge and doesn't want to be interpreted the wrong way and of course the writers are stuck too because they've got to get from a to b um and of course this isn't canon again but i think it was a pretty nice solution you know what do you think of my solution i didn't see how come you didn't tell me there was a super chat i did not see it for any i don't know how i missed it well, what? I've been clipping, so I've, I've been. What do you mean? I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Well, just oh, there's one word you shouldn't read in there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to read it. R T and Z. The R word. Just don't my say secret it. shame equals. I liked parts of ST of Star ST Discovery season one. I call it STD. I don't have. I don't know what Discovery is. E G Lorca. Yeah, he sucks. But when season two made uh, Burnham, you mean Mikey Spock? Into space, Jesus, and Careful. Spock was, Spock was, oh, we're terrible. Our word, yeah. I quit. Well, to me, it's all filth, so if you watch it that, I watched the first, like, eight episodes, and projectile vomiting is just not good for you, so I had to stop. <laughs> they say it's not good for you. Well, Lorca's so, character, which I'm talking about, did make sense in what they were doing. He's a good actor, but then the, it just goes off the rails. He's a scumbag, and, actor. Yeah, but well, uh, anyway, like all our TNZ, thank you so much for that. I yeah. appreciate you. Well, here, let's play some a clip for that. Here we go. Where's McCoy? He went off to create something called a mint julep. That's a hey, Jim, boy. Y'all ever have a real cold Georgia-style mint julep, huh? <laughs> That's for you, <laughs> that R.R. Gets our bad taste out of our mouth, yeah. Yes. <laughs> also, uh, also for you, R.R. I'm a doctor, not a bricklayer. They say there's no devil, Jim. But there is a... Right out of hell, I saw it! There is no third planet. Don't you think I know that? This box, Ed. You proceed from a false assumption. I'm a Vulcan. 
I have no ego to bruise. Yes, thank you so much, RR, and all of you who gave ch super chats. You were too kind. Thank you. Love you. Um, where are we at? Okay. Yeah, so, so, oh, oh, oh I was giving my quick. rating, I guess. Yeah, right? let me give you a rating. Sorry. <laughs> I give it a B. Plus. I think uh, art is uh, A minus. Uh, some panels are pretty damn well done. I like the idea of these aliens, and I like the way they stuck, in my mind, they stuck the landing knowing that they're supposed to get to Wrath of Khan. And yeah, this is a long comic. It's 52 pages, so you get a lot of bang for your buck here. Yeah. So I was right. It is. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, a double a plus longer. issue. Yeah, it's a By double how issue. how much, Mark? Well, it's 52 it's pages, right? It's a bigger book, yeah. Normal is 22 what's pages. What's the regular one, Mark? 22 pages is okay, a normal Okay, so I was book. right. Yeah. Okay, good. What, yeah. What's the cover price on this one? Is it a $4 one back then? I or paid $5? Oh, no, on what's the cover say? I don't see it on there. <clears throat> Mine oh, says yeah, it was, uh, that it was, was uh, $3.50 US and $4.90 Canadian. Right. Yeah, so a comic back then was maybe two ninety nine, maybe. So they char didn't charge you too much for this, I'm guessing. Yeah. 1998. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. So there you go. It was 350. So. But I enjoyed this one. I thought it was a good one. And of course, you you know, not, not to lower the bar, but there's so many bad Star Trek comics. And when you can oh, read yeah. it and say, I, when you can read it and say, uh, hey, uh, yes, yeah, so that kind of makes sense. And uh, you got the Yorktown in there, which was a horrible scene to see it destroyed, but drawn beautifully drawn. And this, right. this cover would make a great poster board uh, cover too <laughs> people might think it's close and can't put put uh, the third kind under it and you know, they might think it's a fake uh, a fake uh, poster but uh, it's it's uh, it's pretty good yeah yeah but at the same time i mean how many different ways can you depict um an invasion right like you could you could yeah. also cock it up to hg wells uh, and and that was his original <laughs> idea and professor r2 has very kindly included in case anyone cares and i think it's great information he says uh that the previous issues were two dollars and fifty cents so they did bump it up a little bit uh because they used a yeah, lot more paper pages, and a lot so. more ink so great addition there professor r2 thank you so thank much you. for that yep. my friend yeah thank you yep so, but not too bad, actually, for the double double issue. Today it'd be twelve bucks. Yeah, and like you said, number one was the first issue was really great. Oh, the fidelity and the story and the art, and it was just so enjoyable. Yeah. It was so satisfying. I would own the whole collection of these comics just for that first issue. And the final issue isn't bad either, but the first yeah, yeah, issue yeah. is really a standout. Like it's it's really really good 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 stuff. Absolutely, and you got the so, and you got to see the pajama uniforms. And so RRTNZ says, "Clavi, I have confessed my awful secret and feel absolved of guilt now." <laughs> yes, you, yes, I bless you, my son. You are. Well, I, you, I, when was I, the last um, time? When was your last confession? <laughs> okay, can so, we assign self-flagellation? Um. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> can we put him in the agony booth? I'm kidding. Uh, I'm not, but I am. No, I'm not, no, I mean, I am. he's already been absolved. <laughs> and we love RRT and Z. He's a good friend of the show. There you go. So I give it, I give it a B. Solid B. It was a pretty good issue overall. There was some interesting things in it. Some other things I probably wouldn't have done. Art sketchy at points, but there's some really nice pages here and there. And Michael Collins was, was did a fair job, and as did Mr. Williams with the inks. So overall, nicely. You don't get, like I say, you said it, Mark. We don't get a lot of really well drawn. Well put together, visually nice Star Trek comics. Usually, quite frankly, they're not given to the you know at any given time. Back in the days of comics, the bigger the the bigger name artists were rarely given that, except unless they happened to be like a Trek fan and asked for it. Um, they weren't the biggest sellers, therefore they sold okay. Don't get me wrong, but most writers, the big name writers and artists, didn't really mess around with uh, the Star the, the any of the like uh, you know the licensed property stuff. So they did their own thing. So it was pretty good, well, decent for a Star Trek comic. And there you go. Now, now we will have another one as soon as um, well, we'll do another Star Trek comic as soon as we can get one in Raquel's hands. Whatever I it will be. buy, whatever you tell me to buy, as long as it says Star Trek on it, I will buy it. Well, we're gonna we're gonna send you one or something. Because I've got well. a couple. I got some. I've been saying that forever, but I do have I'm finishing up something to send you. So I'm gonna just put them in the box and let it go. So. When it gets there, then uh, it's gonna then you be can enjoy so it. expensive. So, so as soon <laughs> as we're matter. able, to, as soon as we're able, to, uh, I mean, I know we can get another one to you. 
but um, I have some ideas of what we can do, but we can't do any of them until Raquel has a has um, digitalitis. I do. I will. Um, I'm. 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 I admit it, and I'm sorry, everyone. But that is the nerd in me. I grew I'm up with tell- books. I like books. I like the way they smell. I like the way they feel. I have also done extensive yeah. research on on how we imbibe. Uh, information and how when we're reading digitally we're not we're not really truly reading we're not engrossed we're not immersed in what we're reading we're actually um scanning we're skimming and scanning and uh and that information we're not we're not fully taking it in so i i uh i i see this neuroscience i see these this behavioral science and i know that that just the digital world is not for me i don't enjoy reading in the digital world i love physical books especially the way they smell they smell like cigarette smoke golf right. green uh, ink. Okay. It's so good so basically well, we will review okay. another track comic when we can get one in Brazil's hands not, not before the unless, whole thing is my fault unless- Unless is, we can hypnotize you, or your fault. maybe Spock can do a mind meld with you and say and convince you digital is okay. Your no. fault. No, just you are not <laughs> learning. You're not. You're, look, okay, so maybe you feel differently about this because you're taking in these comics for the first time or for the second or third time. Yeah, you and Kobe. Right. But anyone yeah. who's approaching these comic books for the first time, if they're reading them digitally, they're not imbibing them fully they're not enjoying them fully they're scanning and skimming that's uh, the way our brains work when we're engaging with digital content and um i'm just it's already hard enough for me to get used to and i don't mean this as an insult i'm just being totally honest it's already very difficult for me to get used to looking at the pictures because i'm you know, i'm a reader of text like let's get some text in right yeah. And so it's a very different experience if you're reading Bleak House and if you're reading a comic. Those two things are very different. Yeah. So anyway, I just want to spend uh, some time with the comic and, well, and get to know it and 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 give it the time and the fine. attention it deserves. It's like I said, we don't necessarily see the eye out of that because re- for review purposes, digital is fine for me. For for like a comic book that means something to me that I want to own or something like that, I would always get the physical one. Mm-hmm. But just to review it, so I can like give a review. It's just, and I can force us also nifty to be able to show it. You know when we're doing it here, like on the like we do on you know on the, on the screen or whatever. That's nifty. Yeah. That, that to do as well. So yeah, I mean that's. But yeah, look, I love having the book. If, if I want the comic or the book, whatever I'm reading, I want it. And uh, but as far as like when we're doing on as a show. Obviously, I like the, I love the fact that we can show that people are as well. No, Give them an cool. eye Yeah, but it's pretty cool. Mary well, is, is yeah. saying that she rewrote um, her nursing books when she was in university because that's the way she learns. Did you know, Mary, that you get about 30% retention when you copy uh, down notes off of a board or if you copy uh, keynotes um, out of a, a physical book onto a piece of paper, especially if you're using cursive handwriting. Um, and and there are different methods of, of learning and retaining material and they go up, up, up and up depending upon how you're engaging with the material. Did you know that uh, teaching someone the material, so let's say you read a book and then you teach someone about the book or you explain the book to somebody while teaching them about the key points, do you know that you get over 90% retention? So uh, 90%, in and around 90% or more just from um, reading it and then teaching it. So it's it's an incredible process, the way that the human brain works and the way that we process information. So I think it's wonderful that you wrote out all of your notes. When I was in university, my husband used to make fun of me because I I would write out 90 pages worth of notes uh, for an exam and I would memorize them verbatim. And he used to sit on the Chesterfield and test me and, and we'd go through, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 pages, 90 pages of notes. And uh, and he would be like, how do you do this? How do you pack all this <laughs> into your brain? And I would use the different methods on the pyramid of, of uh, information process to improve my retention. 
So writing out notes, uh, listening to the notes, reading the notes, uh, 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 you know, teaching the notes to people. And I'll go through this whole process for learning. So I love that you did that too. Anyways, I'm being really nerdy and I need to be quiet now. Why? Oh, so good. Well, yeah. When do you ever need to be? <laughs> you, ridiculous. You I'm so sorry. Yourself. Tell them yeah. Tell being people sorry, enjoy David. listening to you. Yeah. They'll enjoy. <laughs> they it, didn't so. like listening to you. They didn't leave. But yeah, uh, no, no but I mean that. Permission to be you, sorry about it. You do have a point about reading, you know, physical copies. Although it's now that I'm, uh, you know, uh, my age is a speed limit or the old speed limit. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, the damn text got smaller in my comics and it really hurts the enjoyment of the comics and i hate wearing my damn reading glasses uh because i'm allergic to retinox but uh yeah it's it's <laughs> it's a pain in the ass tonight. <laughs> it's a pain in the ass to pick up the and when i wear my contacts i can't read so I gotta, it is a hassle when you so the convenience of digital yeah there's a convenience you don't get the full experience but if someone doesn't have good vision it really helps to blow that damn sucker up on the screen, but there's nothing like, you know, curl, you know, you're on your lazy boy recliner reading a bunch of comics. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. nice. But uh, when you're younger, it's so much damn easier to read them. And I can fly through a comic too, if I want to. And like probably clobbering times the same way. And probably like, uh, you know, oh, yeah. two to three minutes. If you, if you really got to get, get through it, especially if you've well, read of course, it. Chris Claremont wrote it or something. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, but then you do want to suck it in and, and enjoy it too. You especially the how it's expensive. Yeah. They, sometimes like, oh wow, I read that. Yeah, yeah. I, read that. That's why I do kind of like blowing them up on the screen and stuff. Sometimes like yeah. big the panels and look really mm -hmm. cool. And like, um, when I when I was for a while there, I would like cast the. You could you know you can cast your phone to the TV. Yeah. Whatever. Yes. Sometimes I would put like digital comics on the big TV screen and blow up panels and stuff, and I, they yeah. look beautiful. I do enjoy that part of it. Too. Yeah. Yeah. So it does make it easier, but uh, the convenience and and the next generation is gonna be reading digital. I mean, as much as I have mm. you know old books, but most of the youngins are they're well, all you know my guys are all on little <laughs> tiny screens or Kindle. And the Kindle, I have to say, reading uh, hey, your Parker books Luck. on the Kindle, hey Parker, look, are nice or. I can read a lot faster on the Kindle. I can blow up the damn text, and uh, but you're not, sometimes I've got. But you're not uh, but, processing the information. Oh, fully. I process it. I process you it. have I to read I... Nicholas Carr's book called *The Shadows* or *The Shallows*. I'm sorry. It <clears throat> discusses the neuroscience of, you know, things like cursive writing and things like yep. uh, Mary mentioned uh, doing flashcards for herself, which I also use, by the way, Mary, and just. And 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 scanning and skimming and and deep reading and 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 processing um, thoughts and and being able to reread material and and what it's like to listen to a story while you're reading it or just reading the story or just reading the information. So, but you really have to read a book. Uh, it, it's called The Shallows, and it is written by Nicholas Carr, and he talks about how digital reading. Um, changes our entire physical reaction um, to processing information. And um, it's not about opinion. It's it's about no. the things that are happening to you physically, neurologically. Um, and uh, and it's something you should explore. And um, yeah. A good, friend the, of mine, uh, a good friend of mine who has no choice but to read, mostly still buys his, his regular comments, but he has to read on digital because of his eyesight so bad. Mm -hmm. They can't see it. It helps them to have to get a lot of stuff on digital now because you know it's just he's had all these big. different eye surgeries. He's a lot older than me, yeah. And he's um he still buys his uh buys the physical stuff, but if he can't get it on digital, a lot of times he can't read it. Yeah. Get up there. Did you know that I bumped my font size up on my hardback of my first book, Science Fiction Tales? I bumped it up one full uh font point because of the research that I've done as a communications and technology scholar and also as an instructor, uh, because I was concerned with, with uh, people's ability to, to read the book um, because the font sizes that I grew up with are so teeny tiny. I think my first copy of Dune, I think it was in nine point font <laughs> uh, and it was a serifed font. 
Now think to yourself what it would be like to read nine <clears throat> point serif font um, in a thousand page book. I mean, it's just not something we can do anymore because our eyes are, are so much different than they used to be. And now you have these sans serif fonts that you're reading in a digital app, in a digital environment. And yeah, it's very different. So in my, in, in the second book that I have coming out, I'm definitely going to um, make sure that I bump that font up one more point so that people aren't struggling um, to get through the book. And and Clavi and uh, Mark, you guys are raising a very good point. Why save money on the book and choose eight point font or nine point font or even 10 point font uh, in, in these served fonts that is so small? No one can read that anymore. Hey, Kay Roberts. Mm -hmm. Kay Roberts, what's up? Yeah, and as Larry Larry says, yeah, <coughs> Kindles are like paper. So I got to say that the Kindle, the new paper white, mm -hmm. I do love reading on that uh, because it, after a while, your brain processes it as uh, reading a book because it's so much Does like, it feel like with paper that ink. To you? Yeah, no, but my brain, the way my brain works, it's a lot different than if reading on a screen. Mm -hmm. Definitely, you never. It's not the same. But when you read that Kindle, with the the, you can adjust the the size of the font and the the. the texture and it looks like after a while it looks like uh, just like larry larry says it looks very close to uh, ink on paper it's uh, they did a really nice job with the with the paper white uh with that uh, e-ink that mm -hmm. they call it and it's uh you know if i'm at the beach or something you know i got the i can read that even in the sun i read uh you know the, i was reading some of the star trek novels even though i own them nice. in paperback I was like, you know, Vulcan's Glory, for example. I, I just I'm buying it on the Kindle so I can <laughs> I can read the damn thing. Yeah. Uh, and it uh, uh, there is a definite correlation between the way your brain works. But I appreciate what they did with the Kindle mm -hmm. to try to replicate as much as I can that uh, ink book, on paper. The book look. feel. Yeah. The book and for feel. Those yeah. Who do not have... like reading on an iPad mm -hmm. or something. Does actual yeah. Kindles do that now? But they're expensive. Yep. And, and, no, and they're for cheap. those who are very struggling. Cheap, uh, with mm. reading, I should say, as an instructor, a post-secondary instructor, I would definitely suggest that if you're struggling with your attention span because you work a lot on the internet and you work a lot on computers, one way that you can help to restore your attention span and help retain information and get yourself back reading where your brain needs to be, um, not in films, not, and I'm sorry to say, not in comics, not in any of that stuff, but to get your brain where you're, where you can process large amounts of information again, and you can be Im immerse yourself in, in, in a deep book. Um, one way you can do that is you can get an Audible account or you can go to LibriVox if it's classic, um, if they're, if you're studying classics, class, classic literature, um, and you can actually listen. This is what I tell my students all the time. Listen to the chapters while you are reading. And it, it can really restore that relationship that you had uh, with reading and, and doing that deep uh immersive reading and and having that lovely experience again just go ahead and use that technology to restore what the technology broke uh, which is which is that relationship you had that immersive relationship you had with the text it can really help and you will retain more information especially if you um have attention deficit or or you're finding it hard to concentrate yeah and i always would write my notes down on on paper and pencil when i was studying you know in college or school it definitely did uh, did help to write you know versus and of course i'm unfortunately old enough where it was would have been un, very uncommon to see someone with uh, a laptop or i don't even think you could have had a laptop in no. class back then you're not allowed uh, well, some places you are, but now, I mean, you know. The no, kid, no, the, the I kid. mean, now anyone can do whatever they want, but not when you and yeah. I were in school. No, and the laptop with the battery would have lasted a half hour or something, <laughs> yeah. 20 pounds or whatever. Uh, yeah. But you do, you did, you know, you did uh, comprehend a lot more by rewriting your notes over. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. I was watching something, someone, uh, professor banned laptops, a student brought an old typewriter in and was typing his notes in the oh. class and was laughing. Not good. <laughs> Not good. <clears throat> well, we have kept you here very late, number one, so let's, we need to start. I imagine it's school night you need to get moving. So. I do. I have to actually deck out because I'm 45 minutes past the school uh -oh. night. Detention time. Yeah, did, I'm going to get detention. 
Um, uh, so I'm just going to deck out without saying my goodbyes. Everyone knows what I'm going to say anyway, but I just love you all so much. Sure. And, and I just want to thank you all so, so much for being here to support Clobby, uh, to support Clobby's channel. I love you all so much. Thank you for the brilliant, truly brilliant conversations. I love your company so much. Mm -hmm. And I wish I could name every single person in the chat because it's really each and every one of you that makes this experience special and i'm so happy that the guys decided to take our walkie talkie nights because we're like you know we're like kids we're walkie talking all the time uh to take our walkie talkie nights and make um the clubhouse so um thank you clubby for your hospitality and mark thank you thank you for thank you. being so funny and cool tonight you were just oh, on you. point you had like a zinger 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 every second um maybe i should have caffeine more often than i'm not yeah right to. <laughs> uh anyway you were on fire tonight and clubby thank you for the marvelous impressions thank you. and i love you so much thank you for putting up with me for having me here for we inviting me here and for making me a part of your friend group i also want to do a special shout out to um larry larry chris persia and oh my god mary Mary, 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 wow, what an incredible gift you gave Clobby tonight. Good night, everyone. We love you, number Never one. Go. Thanks for being here. Take care now. We'll see you Saturday night. Oh, my goodness, the wonderful first officer, folks. Love you. And, yes, uh, any, uh, number one, any anything you want? I mean, number one, sorry. Uh, Chief Engineer, number two. you want to say? <laughs> yeah, number two, oh, well, anything to say before we uh, uh, get moving? Well, uh, very quickly, uh, support Raquel on Patreon if you can. Uh, you can buy her books on Kindle, which I, I've done. And my trick is to delay my shipments if I have to order something from uh, the Amazonians. So uh, I get that $3 uh, credit and I put that towards Raquel's book. So, uh, but check, uh, check out her Patreon is there. And uh, I'll be back, of course, uh, well, hanging out in the chat on uh, Saturday night with uh, four more great episodes of Voyager. And then Sunday night, Geek Group will be back at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern. And I, I haven't seen uh, that new uh, Web Slinger movie, so but I don't know if we're going to talk about that at oh. all. But, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we always yeah, have fun. Run right out there and watch it. <laughs> we always, I'm going to have to send money to everyone oh. if they want to go see it. But oh, uh, let me put in my link to my uh, Doomsday Machine uh, here. And uh, if you want, anyone wants a copy of that, and it's getting late now, so. I'm not going to show anything, uh, show anything tonight. But that liberator is almost done. I just got to put the, uh, I've cool. got the uh, stickers to put on. I've got to print the decals. You gotta, you gotta do it right. So I need to get those decals on the engines. But other than that, it's all, all set and ready to uh, head out. At uh, what, what speed should I? What's the speed? What do they go? Uh, space, uh, not space normal. Uh, what's the, the standard by drive? twelve, standard, standard by, by 12. ten, and yeah. such. Yep. Um. Parker, I did last night. Uh, uh, was it last night? Max Redstone and I talked extensively about Superman two. Both caught Donner and uh, and Lester, if that's what you mean. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I might review Superman one one of these days. Superman month? I don't know. Maybe I will. Have you done super, the first Superman movie? Or we've talked about it before back a, a few years ago, and Polly and I talked about it on its anniversary. But um, one thing I can tell you. It, yeah. One thing I can definitely tell you though. Superman. <laughs> that's for sure that's gonna be played a lot i have a feeling <laughs> boy dude if you give me a deadly toy right there <laughs> it's gonna be as popular uh, as dumbass <laughs> yes it is more popular so anyway appreciate you being here of course <clears throat> appreciate you, you all you. being here uh let's see um show notes some shout outs friends let's see what we got up in y'all tonight <clears throat> excuse me uh, tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time and 7 Eastern, of course, on uh, the great J-Man's channel. Uh, J-Man and Sean and I will continue our Frank Miller Daredevil reviews, reviews of the reviewing the uh, d run, uh, Frank Miller run of Daredevil, the classic from the early 1980s. Unbelievably great stuff. And then... Uh, I don't think there'll be a 32 flavors of Dick Weiser tomorrow. I don't think he's doing a show no. tomorrow night, but, uh, but who well, knows? Maybe I'll do like, uh, if I have, uh, you should do one. Well, I'm definitely doing late night Fortnite, but if I'm, uh, I think my, my, uh, better half is playing some, uh, pickleball. So maybe I'll do something while she's playing pickleball, but I'll let you guys I know. I think he's not. According to what he said, I'll let you know. Um, anyway, 
Then, of course, Saturday night, Star Trek, same Trek time, same Clobby Channel. Hello there, Daniel Link. Welcome, by the way. And Picasso. All right, see here. Yes, so four more episodes of Star Trek Voyager Season 5 on Saturday night, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. <laughs> night, sit, sit, sorry. Central Standard Time. Then, of course, Sunday Night Geek Rail, Mark D's with, with the C's channel, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, Geekery in the Eatery. And then uh, 6 o'clock on uh, Monday night on the great J-Man's channel, back with Legion of Superheroes reviews. And then that later on my channel with some more Superman talk on Monday, on Superman month and so on and so forth. And now for some shout-outs. First, our great wrenches, of course. Eric K, Chris Persia, D Bud Martin, Lord Thoth, J Man, Maddie's Daddy, Stephen Callell, Fanny Outside, the Hungry Boy, Maximum Redstone, and Larry, Larry, Larry. Now, my dear friends, I want to thank all of you for hanging out with us, hanging out with us tonight. The Ginger Menace, Mary, love you. That is was just too kind of you. Thank you so much, my dear. Thank you for being here tonight. I really appreciate you. Uh, Mars Monkey Max MMM, Putin's dog, no, Putin's cat, or something like that. Wes Cagle, K. Roberts, the Tetrarch of Apathy, Oliver Bellamonte, Don Don Power Rangers, Ranger Power, um, Daniel Link, Picasso, K. Roberts, Parker Luck, uh, Professor R2, the wonderful um, Princess Fiona. Stuart Mitchell. Uh, ba 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 ba. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Text me to get to the other ones that I'm just shouted out. Yeah, sorry, folks. That's why it's the delay there. Um. I know there are more, but we have so many people here in the chat. Text me while to get the ones that I haven't shouted out yet. Oh, and don't forget the poll. Oh, crap. Thank, Thank you for the reminder, Wes Cagle. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. End poll. Let's see. All right, the poll, folks. By the way, thank you anyone who's lurking. We really appreciate our lurkers. I don't say it enough. And anyone watching on a download or rewatch, we really, really appreciate you. Tonight's poll, who is your favorite Blake 7 character? Avon wins with a whopping fair 48% of the vote. Blake in second place with 32%. Villa gets 10% in third place. And in last place, the wonderful, lovely Jen Chappelle as Callie. So there you go. Thank you so much for voting. It's, again, that was, uh, you know, uh, like 49 votes. So that's very cool. I really appreciate it. A lot of voting. votes, yeah. Yeah. Also here with us tonight was... Um, Got to get to it. Yeah, this... Uh, um, wow. Oh, RRTNZ. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Ravenscroft was also here tonight. That's right. Um, oh, we got another super chat. RR, thank you so much, my friend. You're too kind. I'm not worthy. It says, when Burnham <laughs> roared, I am your father. I am your father. As she loomed over the fourth doctor, wielding the necro sword, but was suddenly disemboweled by Prince Caspian. <laughs> who cried not who cried not if I stick you first, I chortled. For Scapian who cried not if I stick yoga. Wow. Thank you so much. You I love those things, by the way, when you do those. <laughs> thank you, RR. You're too kind. I'm, I'm not worthy. But I do thank you for it very much. Um let's see. Who else is up in heel tonight? <laughs> Did I say Oliver Belamonte? He probably did. Probably did, but you know, said him again because he, you know, he's worth saying again and again, 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 again. Well, I know there's someone else that we have not shouted out yet, folks. That's how it works. 
Um, almost there, folks. This is where I'm almost there. I'm not even. I'm not even close to almost there. Also, very rocket active chat tonight. Yeah. Uh, let me know if anybody pops in on the other side because I'm going backwards. Brogu. <laughs> yeah, that's where the lurkers uh, sometimes pop in at the very end. Yeah. Yes. Brogu from my old hometown. That's why I need you to watch that side because I've got the. Zathras was here. That's right. Zathras, an old rascal. The time scales was here tonight. All right. Um, oh, boy. I got to watch Voyagers tonight. Ugh, boy. At least I, wa I watched the first episode. Yep. Yeah, got to watch. Uh, yeah, you did already. Yeah, one up on yeah when I was that. sick, I watched five episodes in a row. I don't know if that helped with my... Uh... Fluid. You're trying to make yourself sicker? <laughs> yeah, what could be worse? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not nice. No, it's not. No. Um, babe, 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 babe. Dad man walking popped in. Dad man at the yeah. Battleground Clan. I'm okay. sorry I didn't get to hang with out with him tonight. I apologize for that. Um, Sports balling tonight. Yep. I wanted to talk to him about the Super Bowl, too. Smilex. Kate popped in. Spotlights. Um, a ba 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 ba. Let's see, or more likely, ba 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 ba. Oh man, man, it's a lot of the same people over and over again, right? You know what I mean? Which is good, but yeah, that. that oh, it's does great. Happen. Oh, I love it. But I mean, yeah, it's yeah. tough to get to one you haven't done yet. You know. That's when you got to scroll. But you're right. Yep. It's good. I don't want to miss anybody. Well, I'm, it's uh, that's what makes the show fun is having all these people in the chat. Yeah, JT Kurt was here though. Anonymous Gamer was here. All right, so there's Adrian James. Herc One Thirty was here. That's what I'm talking about. Nice to have a few people to shout out once in a while. Wagnar was here tonight. Hey, 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 the Wag Man with the Wag Plan. Penny mm -hmm. was here. Your hey, Muslim uncle here? just hopped in on the other end. So Your hey, Muslim man. uncle, what's up, buddy? Thank you so much for being here. Peace be on you, sir. Penny was here, the lovely Penny, and Michael Beacom popped in. And shout out to you, Michael, and your wonderful wife, Cassandra. Hope you all do it well out there. Um, sorry. NFL Films music is still resonating within me. Ezra Goldstein. <laughs> Shalom, my friend. Uh, yeah, NFL Films music. I just love it. I listen to it all the time. It is the soundtrack to my life. The great 1701 Tex. Tex, buddy. I go way back to find yep, him. Way back, yeah. yep. Taylor Swift was greater than Disney Star Wars on uh, MCU. Well, I guess. It's hard to argue with it, but I don't like really the big Swifty. I'm no Swifty. I don't know if you bet. You are a Swift guy, though, but. I'm pretty slow, actually. The Wolf Breaker. <laughs> the Wolf Breaker. <laughs> He's the man, the man with the Midas touch. Captain Infinity, Section 31. Hike. Um, boom, 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 boom. And I bet you. Now it's getting close to betting time now. It's getting close to betting time because we're not we're close to there. I'm gonna go way, way out on the limb. After I say DJ play nice, of course, which you know. In the Polymies Minion, I'm gonna say that we probably have no one else we have not shouted out already, except for of course Blood Plunk reviews, but that goes without saying. Right? Blood Plunk, yes. Yep. But other than those. I think I've got it under control. What do you think? Is there going to be another one? There's got to be another one, but uh, we had so many people here tonight. Yep. Joe Dog. See, I told you there was another one. You didn't there we go. Joe Dog. Yep. yep. Um, and FK, I think AKH was here, of course. Always here. Tim was here. So, but aside from those August folks, uh, Dave C. We have Dave C, of course. We all knew Dave C was here, right? Didn't we? And Claude Salling, hey, Claude. Claude was here, right? Yeah. Yeah. But other than them, I think it's smooth sailing from now on. But I've got everybody that I'm scrolling up and confident 
that I've shouted out everyone who's here in the chat tonight. The night's the night. Um, except for Keely Chow, roll tide. Okay, so I didn't have it. Now I've got everybody. That's it. I'm confident that I've got them all, baby cakes. Um, yeah, that's it. Did it. Done. I think you got it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you everybody. Stuart Mitchell, right? And Mars Monkey Max. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stuart another, Mitchell. Yeah. 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 MMM. Putin's cat says, can you talk about I Dream of Genie? Yes. Great show. I love Barbara Eden and, and, Ra and Larry Hagman. A lot of fun. Major Healy and Dr. Bellows. Yeah, what a so, great show. I talked Dr. about Bellows it. reminded me of Aquaria in some ways. A little yeah. bit. I don't know if I'm crazy, but yeah. Huh? He what? He reminded me of Aquaria a little bit in some uh, ways. I don't know. Reminded me more of Frank Burns. <laughs> the look, the look, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the way he looked, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love that show, though, yeah. So yeah. here we go. Uh, everyone, thank you so much. We're going to get out of here now. Have a fantastic weekend. And can't wait to see you on Saturday night, Star Trek, and everywhere else. Good night, everybody. Clobber on, clobbers.